This is a proud moment for the Falklands. Here they come to get their bronze medals at this football competition, led by the captain, Wayne Clement, as well. And the boys themselves happy, and they're getting a nice round of applause. Pleased to say that quite several hundred people from uh, Bermuda who watched the final. Placing was such that we are now playing off for 13th and 14th place. So I think that in itself is a testimony to the football that the boys have played here. They've got a higher placing than they anticipated. Well, the Falcons team, since I arrived, I've made three, four, five scratchings because three players, uh, two players, have failed fitness tests at the last moment. Sadly, Dan Steer is out, and also uh, Dane Gilson Clark who's only got that uh, one game in, and in fact he didn't complete the first game. We really did look forward today to seeing him playing alongside of his brother Ethan gilson Clark, and the plan was that Matt Francis would play up left alongside them to give us a real positive attacking force. But as it's happened, Matt's had to withdraw back to that left back position where he's played very, very well, but he's such a talented player, we would like to have seen him pushing up more to support the gilson Clark brothers, but it isn't going to happen. Um, the only other good news is that Eva Monsefu, the Peruvian right back who had a marvellous game until he too got injured against uh, the Isle of Man in the very first match, he's back, he's fit to play. So the goalkeeper will be Ross Peters, Eva will be on the right at the back, Josh Peck and Torren Hart will be the central defenders and Matt Francis now playing back in his usual place of left on the left at the back. Um, Jose Reyes keeps his place in the team on the right of midfield. Toby Adioy plays in the centre of midfield and Sean East, who's had a, a very, very good tournament, the young lad, he's playing on the left of midfield. Uh, Ethan George comes in to take fr over from Dane gilson Clark, and Ethan gilson Clark plays striker, Hello, so we've got the two Ethans again. And Jose Castro uh, comes in late as a, and will start the game on the left. We hope he will play well up the field to give Ethan gilson Clark some support. So on the bench, we've got Deck Bonner. He's carrying an injury still. Uh, Andreas Balladeros, Matt Hansen, the goalkeeper. Jordan Betts, Axel Reed, and uh, Macaulay Budd. Well, he's injured too, so uh, I don't think he'll feature. Um, You've got to feel sorry for Jordan because he went to Gotland six years ago and it was discovered that he was ineligible because he was too young. He was only 15. And now six years later he's come all the way to Guernsey and because of injury he hasn't got a kick either. And also we feel for young Jake Hawksworth, such a dedicated young football player. And uh, he has had injuries ever since arriving and he's not got on and I don't think he'll get on today. So. But again, he's very positive. He's already looking forward to the Orkney Islands in two years' time, and he's hoping he will be there. He'll have the benefit of, of the experience of being here with the team in Guernsey, so he'll know what to expect in two years' time. Right, let's look at the Orland team. They have a basically a young side as well, and uh, they've had a, they haven't won a game here, but they, no, nobody's really given them a drubbing. They lost 4-1 to Guernsey, and their other two games were 2-0 defeats. So it's going to be tough for the Falcons, uh, I feel, today. 
Uh, the team is Jens Lindell in goal. The back three, Adam Eriksson, Max Peterson, Ted Gostas. They have two holding midfielders in Joel Kallstrom and Leo Anderson. Daniel Bowman will be their forward midfielder. Two strikers up front, Sam Norberg and Vincent Emerson. And they have two play, play with two wing backs. Melvin Kahnberg and John Brumquist. The manager is Roger Amani. They have four injuries. We think we got troubles. They got four wounded here that won't be playing today. So once again, uh, you know, people question why bring 20 players when you could bring 15 and save five, five uh, flights. Uh, the money on five flights. Well, the reason is people get injured very quickly and when they're playing three games in succession, as all the teams here to, uh, playing today have had three games in succession, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, a rest day yesterday, you need as many players as you can get. And of course, the winners of today's semi-finals will go on to play yet another game tomorrow. Uh, playing the semi-finals today will be uh, the Isle of Wight against Jersey and Yunus Mon against the hot favourites Bermuda. They've brought under-21 internationals with them. They're really determined to win this tournament. Playing off for 5th, 6th will be Guernsey Gozo. 7th, 8th, Shetland Greenland. 9th, 10th, Orkney Isle of Man. 11th, 12th, Western Isles, Menorca. Falklands and Orland, as we know, playing off for 13th, 14th. And the two small islands, Freuer and St Helena, playing off for 15th, 16th. Now, the ladies' semi-finals today will feature Western Isles against Menorca and the Isle of Man against Bermuda. Uh, a lot of controversy there because Menorca and Jersey were tied at the top. Goal difference the same, fair play the same. So they, Menorca went through on the toss of a coin. That's how lucky it was, but that's the way they decided it. So here we go. The Falklands today are back to their white strip, the white top, blue shorts, light blue shorts, white sh uh, socks and red numbers on the back. Now, they put up a scaffolding here yesterday in readiness for the ladies' final, which will be played here tomorrow, and we've been able to use it. So we've got a nice high vantage point. And, of course, and up here today, again, we have Chris Ironin with me, who will be uh, summarising. Uh, Triana's here with a new piece of equipment, so I hope you're hearing as well down there. And, of course, on the uh, FITV, uh, are also filming this. You'll be able to see it, I think, Catherine said, maybe later tonight. Uh, we've got... Um, Tyrone Henry on the camera and um, we're just about ready to kick off it's a rather chilly morning here slightly blustery too uh, the weather 13 or 14 degrees only and there's threat of rain later today and the golfer Kevin Clapp is not happy about that because he's going to have to play later when the weather is uh, poorer than it is at the moment there's some suggestion that tomorrow's golf might be cancelled because of, uh, of bad weather. So they're off and running and um, it's uh, in the all and half of the field with the big central defender, that's Patterson. Patterson plays it wide out to the left where it's picked up by Kahnberg. Kahnberg plays it back against to, to Anderson. Anderson now plays it right across the far side of the field. Falcons well advanced today. They've started up right up the field and it, they, look, they have a positive look. I said to Troy, what did you tell the players today? He said, go out and enjoy yourself today. Just enjoy it, have fun. And that's the way we hope it'll be. Two youngish sides here playing today. All and still in all red, all red. Keeper in blue, right away on the far side from us. They pass the ball over to the far right hand side of the field. Falcons haven't had the ball yet since the kickoff. It's all and had the ball, total possession ever since the kickoff. But they're in their own half of the fields. So they're being contained by the Falklands. And they've still got the ball. Now they make a break down here, around the far side. And there's a break on here. And Josh Peck's going to have to get in there quickly. Uh, but he ran right across the ball and he left it for Ross Peters. Ross was quickly out of his goal. Good anticipation there from the lad. And he picks it up. And now he passes it to Eva, who was so impressive in that first match against the Isle of Man until they cruelly took him out. And he's not played since. His first pass there was a nice directed pass and who's that brought down on the far side of the field I think that's uh, Castro Matt Francis. Uh, Matt Francis with number 11 on his back Matt was looking forward to playing a much more forward role today but he's had to come back into this left back position to fill in because of the injuries so Torren Hart was due to play left back and he's in the central defense once again alongside of the ever reliable captain Josh Peck so Matt plays a long, long ball, and it's not too accurate. It goes straight to the Orland player, but Sean East gets his first touch, plays it nicely back to, to Matt. Matt back to Sean. Sean East 
back to Matt Francis. Mac twists and turns, completely deceives the, the opposition player, but he just overran it a bit, but he gets, gets it back from Toby. Nice work from Toby to Sean, to Matt Francis. Nice work on the left-hand side to Castro. Castro advancing forward down the left-hand side of the field, but he just dispossessed at the last minute there by Ericsson. And the ball is uh, back with the Orland players again. The big number 14, uh, Sam Norberg, plays it forward to the right winger, uh, Vincent Emerson. Emerson on the ball. He plays it back to uh, Karlstrom. Karlstrom across there now to Anderson. Anderson all the way back inside their own half the field. And now they cross it over here in front of us to the captain. And uh, that's uh, Ted Gostas. Now there's a young lad here, number eight, won the ball. He passes it inside. Falkland's under a bit of pressure. There's five, six, seven back defending. Long high ball comes in and a header. Oh, I thought that was going to be in the back of the net. It just it's eluded the incoming number seven, I think that might have been. Um, can't quite see his number from here. I'm not too familiar yet with these boys. Sam Norberg, I think that was, that went in there. And the, the ball just scraped off the top of his hair and uh, went harmlessly out for a goal kick. Ross Peters plays it short to Torren. I don't like this when they do this. There's always this feeling something will go wrong, but eventually the ball's cleared upfield. Nicely won by Ethan George in a header there, but he couldn't find Gilson Clark. And the ball goes back from Torren with a back header safely into the hands of Ross Peters. Well, we know it's pretty early in the morning down there in the fourth, so I, I hope that um, a few people um, uh, uh, knew that the game was going to be was going to be on this morning and uh, we thank uh, Adam for coming in early and and getting us on air he normally his breakfast show starts at seven I believe right Torren Hart makes a lot of noise there to the referee and about the fact that Eva was pulled over and hurled into the sidelines Torren takes the, the free kick trying to find Toby, but the, the wind's right against our team at the moment. And again, a little bit of action there in a slight sort of hesitation, but Josh Peck wisely let it through to Ross. Ross was eight quickly. He's very fast off the line, is Ross Peters. And he um, anticipates really well. He doesn't hesitate. If it's his ball, he'll be out there. And that's three times already in this uh, first few minutes of the game. A quick word while the ball's out from uh, you, Chris Island, about the early stages, please. So the Olin team, Patrick, look like they're coming here to, to play football. They've been knocking short balls in with a lot of good movement from their forward players in the midfield. But I think, obviously, it's a shame that Matt hasn't been able to get forward. But we've got two willing runners in our fullbacks today. Um, I think they'll be massively important um, for the Falklands today. And already Monfest, who's been after the ball and looking for the ball a lot from, from, Tor from Torren Hart uh, in his position, trying to get things forward. So, so far, all in with all the possession, but uh, the Falklands, Falklands look well organised today, certainly keeping the pitch a lot smaller than they did against the Innes Mon and Shetland Islands, so we look much more compact, which is good. Um, but yeah, early stages, as I say, all in look like a, like a decent side, we'll have to be on our game. Yep, well, just um, that, as uh, Chris finished his words there, there was a, um, a wild and woolly shot there, uh, came in from um, Vincent Emerson, it went miles high over the crossbar, and sails into the, I don't know what that is, a practice field or something at the far side. And there's a row of trees uh, back over there. And there's um, housing just behind those trees as, as well. So this uh, field, this compact little field, Vale play here. One of the uh, Guernsey teams, the many, many teams in Guernsey in the league, of course. Right, right now, uh, Eva passes the ball back to Sean East. Sean East tries to find... Ethan Gilson Clark, but uh, he's unable to get hold of the ball. And uh, the Orland players are on the attack once more, but Eva Monasefu comes in, intercepts, and just is happy to play the ball upfield into the opposition half. But it, uh, it's back with the goalkeeper, all in blue there, um, Lundell. Lundell plays it out, and the captain over here on the left, Ted Gostas, picks up the ball. It's right on the touchline, down on the halfway line. Now it's Passed back again by Allen. They're building slowly from the back. The big number 20, Max Peterson, plays it right across to the right side to Adam Eriksson. Eriksson inside now to find Karlstrom. Karlstrom back again to Peterson. Peterson trying to find a long high ball here over to the advancing forward number eight. That's uh, Melvin Kahnberg. Kahnberg is robbed. Oh, a, a beautiful, beautiful dispossession here by the Peruvian Eva. He's a very, very talented defender player. But we lose the ball, unfortunately. There, a little bit of uh, pressure on on the Falklands players, and East Shawnee 
goes in with an illegal ch uh, challenge. The Orland boy's down on his haunches. Their uh, staff on the far side are telling the referee what he should do about it, but I don't think the referee will take any action. It was a fairly innocuous little challenge, I thought, by Sean East. Sean puts his hands up in the air and says, look, I'm sorry, that wasn't meant to be anything serious. It didn't look like it to us anyway, but it will give Orland a free kick, and that lad's still down on his haunches, and he's rubbing the back of his head. I'm not quite sure how that could have happened, but maybe when he fell. A few Falklands fans have turned up. I see the Hawks were here. Um, Michael Hart, good to see him here. Supporting the Falklands team. His son Torren, of course, has been one of the mainstays in central defence uh, for the Falklands. Had a very good tournament. Still no free kick, but now they're lining it up. Referee blows the whistle, and in it comes. It's a high, high swirling ball. Who gets his head up? It's, uh, it's Josh got his head up too. The ball runs clear on the far side. And over here, the big uh, uh, Gostas is challenging. The left back is up. Eva wins it, but Eva just can't quite control it. Sean East gets it clear, but it's a bit of a desperation clearance. It goes straight to Orland. There's a shot coming in, but it's wide and high and not too handsome either. So that's wide of the post. So we not really we've lost that momentum that we started with when we were getting forward and trying to build up. Um, not quite sure where or why that's happening. And we need to get a little bit, get things moving a little bit up front. This, of course, is also being recorded on FI TV, and I believe you might be able to watch this game later tonight at home. The Orland's got the ball inside their own half again. Peterson plays it through, trying to find Emerson. Emerson, though, is under pressure from Shawnee. Peterson puts it back to Gostas, the captain. Gostas with that blue armband on to indicate that he is the skipper. He plays a long ball through, and this could be danger for the Falcons, but mm, thankfully the flag went up just in time because uh, Melvin Kahnberg was on the run, this uh, blonde-haired young boy, looks no more than about 18, 17 or 18, and he was straight through onto that, streaking onto it, but uh, the linesman or the referee's assistant on the far side spotted an offside, so Josh Peck will take it halfway inside the Falcons half, just outside the centre circle kicks it high, high, trying to get something going up front, but uh, Ethan Gilson-Clark is outheaded there by the much taller um, Peterson. Toby's challenging in midfield. Toby plays it back to Eva, puts him under pressure, but Eva gets out of trouble, plays it back to, to Gilson-Clark, to Toby. Now, here's a chance, here's a chance on the right-hand side. Finally, we get an attack going. Ethan George, you know, he couldn't quite get onto it. He, it was, the ball was didn't, didn't quite run for him, so once again, all and take the ball, inside their own half. It's uh, played once more inside from Kahnberg into Peterson. He's seen a lot of the ball, the big central defender. Plays it wide on the right over to Ericsson. Ericsson on the right plays it back to, to Peterson. Peterson, they got three at the back incidentally, two holding midfield players, one attacking midfield players, and then they have two wing backs and two up front. That's their formation. And your, uh, manager Roger Amin, Amani, Amani, I think his name is, very helpful beforehand telling me that their formations and how they play. They've got four, four players out today who are wounded. Torren Hart wins a nice header, as he has done most of the tournament. Tries to find Matt Francis. Matt gets the ball, but he's just lost it. But, uh, and the Falcons give possession away. We're, mm, we're not hanging on to that ball probably as, as, as much as Troy and Wayne would like. And we've given possession away once more to, to Orland. But let's not forget, they are silver medalists in this tournament years ago, and they've won the bronze as well. So they're a talented team, but they tend to send young sides to the Ireland Games always. Right, they're on the attack again, Orland. Falcons under a bit of pressure there from Emerson to Bowman, and now on the far on the right, it's Emerson crossing the ball over, and it's this young lad again, Kahnberg, who's seen a lot of the ball, but he's dispossessed finally by Torren Hart but still Orland have the ball. Back now on the halfway line, they're building again. Peterson's right inside the Falcons' half now. He's advanced that far forward, playing it through there to Anderson. Anderson plays it over to the captain, Gostas. Gostas swings the ball through, and it's a race on here, but Ross Peters again anticipates well, comes out, picks the ball up clearly. 0-0 zero, zero if you're just getting up home, back home and joining us. It's uh, 15 minutes gone here at the Corbett Field, home of Vale FC, where we're 
at the game tonight. We played here already in one of our matches. This is playing for 13th and 14th place finish overall. That's what we're playing for. Finally, Faulkner's get a bit of breathing space on the left with Matt Francis playing it inside. But I'm afraid Castro played a loose ball there and it went to the men in red. They're all in red, shirts, socks and shorts. And um, that was a bit loose from the, the young uh, lad, the young Chilean. Uh, Gostas got the ball from the free kick. Plays it to Peterson. Peterson plays it right across field to Ericsson. Another tall, tall young lad over on the far side on the right. Peterson again, I mention him a lot because he's seeing the ball a lot in the centre of defence and he's played the ball through here to Kahnberg. Can he hold the ball? No, he can't. It runs away from him. This is a much smaller field than Blanche Puri Lane where we played the first game, which was absolutely massive. And um, there's two teams playing. I think Santolina and Freuer are playing that uh, today. <laughs> I hate to think what their legs will be like after they've run 90 minutes on that field for, for those two sides. Eva takes uh, the throw, plays a nice, a lovely throw through to Sean East, but Sean bounces it off an all-in player. And again, with the ball's being given away by Reyes. A bit of loose play from the Falcons at the moment. Josh Peck intercepts, plays it to Matt. Matt Francis trying to find uh, Gilson Clark, but unable to do so. Intercepted once more by Karlstrom and Anderson now back to Gostas, who suddenly moved into the centre of the defence. Now Eva bounces, but even Eva makes a mistake today, and I, I didn't think we'd be saying that, but um, it's, it's, I might have to say it is blustery, swirly conditions out there, in all fairness to the players. Um, it's about the windiest day I think we've had since we've been on the island. Orland's got the ball again. Um, that was um, trying to work out who that was. Emerson's over here on the left. Now, they're right down in front of us on this touchline here into the young lad, uh, Kahnberg. Kahnberg, mm, he, yeah, he just took it over the touchline. It's um, probably the small fields catching them out a little bit, perhaps. Now, Reyes plays the ball upfield, but it's a misdirected pass, not a very, very thought-out pass, I have to say. Uh, and it goes straight to the big man Peterson in the back. So he plays it across. Now there's a break on here once again from that long high ball and it's Kahnberg, Kahnberg into, this, into the Falkers penalty area. He's been watched by Eva, Eva again misses his tackle and it's going to be a penalty. I believe we've lost, I think it's a penalty go here. Yeah, Eva mistimed his tackle and down went Emerson and the referee I think is pointing to the penalty spot. Uh, Chris, your take on that? Yes, Patrick, um, again, another good move by Ireland. I'd like our shape, Falkland shape, um, up to this point. We've kept the, bit, the pitch really, really small and, and been nice and compact. But Ireland have been knocking about, and then they look for this They look for this ball over the top for their wing-backs to run onto, and it was the number eight wing-back on this left-hand side who ran into that position. Um, ever got close, um, made the lunge, but unfortunately was just was just that little bit too late um, and taking the man down for the penalty. Right, so Joel Carstrom will take the penalty, number 10. And the referee gives uh, Ross Peters a few instructions about what he can do and what he can't do. And everybody's nicely, almost yes, outside of the semicircle, uh, outside the penalty area where they have to be. And this is the third penalty we've conceded, I think, in the tournament. And up he comes and takes it. And he uh, just places it coolly and calmly to the left of Ross Peters and puts Orland after uh, 20 minutes in this playoff match, 1-0 ahead, penalty uh, by Joel Karlstrom, number 10 of Orland. So Fultons have got a lot to do to, to come back now and overcome this de deficit, if they can. It's, uh, it's a tough ask. Um, not making excuses for the Falklands, but we've got to remember that Orland are one of the bigger, the bigger teams, the bigger islands in the, the island games with a long history in football. Finalists back in 2009 when the tournament was held on their island. Falklands were there, of course. I think Jimmy Curtis was, might have been the manager at that time. I think, he, I think Jimmy was, was the manager. Um, right, ball's back in play, back to Gostas. Gostas trying to get something moving down up front. 
for Emerson, but uh, Torren Hart up on the edge of the area anticipates that well. A bit of hesitation back there in the Orland uh, defence. The keeper was sort of a bit, was not quite sure what he was supposed to be doing there. And eventually he hoofed it high. It went straight nicely to Ethan George. And for some unknown reason, Ethan, I don't know whether he was trying a shot. If so, that was a good idea. I think he might have been, but unfortunately, for the lad, it uh, was quite misdirected, and in fact, it ended up closer to the uh, to the corner flag than it did to the goal. But anyway, you've got to have a go at this stage. They've got to advance. They've got to play positively. There's nothing to lose in this game. It's, it's just a placing at the end of the tournament, which does make a difference in seedings later on when you go to the next tournament. It can make a big difference, of course. I thought that looked offside to me, but uh, linesman flag stays down, and the the uh, Orland are still attacking down the far side. But Matt Francis intercepts and plays a risky ball back to Ross Peters. Ross Peters is under pressure because the ball went straight out to Karlstrom, and to Karlstrom hit it past back, but it was well wide, and Ross Peters watched it go harmlessly past his right-hand post. And that was a bit of a shaky bit of defensive work. Horan gets that ball from the kick-out and plays it through to Ethan George, but Ethan loses control, and it's young Kahnberg on the ball. Kahnberg inside to Bowman. Bowman, but it's taken away by Eva, the man who gave the penalty away, Eva Monsefu, and nicely played from Toby to Sean East. Now we're getting things moving down the left-hand side with Castro. Castro on the far side, trying to find Sean East, but um, he loses the ball and it bounces off Sean East and it's a throw for Orland. Promising looking move there involving four players, but it came to nothing in the end of the day. 1-0, Orland lead here at Corbett Field in this playoff match at the Island Games here on the island of Guernsey, part of the Channel Islands. They've had the games twice before. They say they won't host them again because they simply don't have enough accommodation now, they say, to host the game because it's getting too big. All right, there's Kahnberg. Um, they're playing the ball back to Gostas. Gostas to Peterson. Peterson advances forward. He just finds, oh yeah, he just finds, he's, he's finding his players so well as this big central defender. Kahnberg on the ball. Kahnberg back to, um, I think that's Karlstrom, Karlstrom, long high ball, trying to get uh, way on the far side, trying to get Bloomquist, the midfielder, away. But the ball runs over for a goal, goal kick or throw in. It'll be a throw, I think. Matt Francis, right down by the corner flag in front of the linesman who's got a red or a pink and yellow courted flag down there. The other referee's assistant has the usual all yellow flag. Free kick given away by Sean East. Nothing serious, but it is it is in a dangerous area for the Falklands. There'll have to be some pretty secure defending here. It's going to be taken away over on the far side of the field. I think it's Bloomquist over there. And they're massing. There's only one player, the number eight, uh, Kunburg, back. Everyone else, the other nine players are all forward pushing and shoving going on here now in the penalty area. And the ball comes swinging in, it's high, it's not very well directed, it's missed by everybody, it's missed again, and the wind, I think, took it and swerved it off Josh Peck's foot. But they managed, the Falklands managed to get it clear, a bit of desperation, but all and have the ball again. Some nice footwork coming in there from, from uh, Anderson, and, but Eva intercepts nicely. Eva, but, but he's, he's um, tackled and he goes down, but he's not gonna get the free kick. And there's a lot of shirt pulling going on in front of us there now. And finally, it's, uh, it's Emerson who's got the ball, but Emerson on it, picks it up again, picks it up. He's still got the ball, he's being challenged, and we're just not getting up the ball clear. And there's still danger for the Falcons, but it's somehow squirts its way right across the penalty area. And again, we lose the ball. And again, the Falcons are in deep trouble, and a shot comes in there from Norberg. But it's high and it's wide and over the bar, thankfully. But uh, that was some pretty uh, desperate defending there, Chris uh, Iron, wasn't it? Not too clever. We're showing a bit of panic in the back at the minute, Patrick. Um, you know, the composure's gone, I think, after a little bit after that penalty was scored. And there's a couple of opportunities there for that to be left through to go for to three to Ross. I'd like to see Ross a bit more vocal at the back there, a bit more positive at the back, coming to claim those balls, because there's a couple of opportunities I think he had to come and claim it. Um, and we've got ourselves in a bit of a mix, yep. Yep, thank you, Chris Einan. Been with us for all the games, as he was last time. 
They're on the attack again, and this is an opportunity, and Torren Hart can't do anything except come in and intercept and kick it over the goal line for a corner to the opposition in terms of all in, all in red here today. So we didn't do very well from that kick out from the, from the goal kick either. I think the wind might be helping all in a bit here, Chris. I think it's really behind their backs, isn't it, a little bit? It's certainly behind their backs and it's given them um, sort of the onus to come forward. What, what it probably is helping us though is their three balls over the top, a lot of them have run out over the goal line, so if they continue to play the fashion here at the minute in the second half, they'll, that'll be held up with the wind and probably help them in that respect. And as you say that, Chris, um, those wise words, the, the, the wind took that ball, he was trying to float it in, the, the kicker uh, of that uh, corner, who I think, I'm just trying to get it, uh, I think it was might have been um, uh, Karlstrom it was, it, it just floated into the side netting, um, didn't go anywhere near the uh, six yard box, which is where they tried to aim for. Um, Eva, e Eva lost eight, but he wins the ball back, all in players down, claiming that he got a bit of a knock in the face, but he's up again, and all under on the attack, and a shot comes in, but their shooting's a bit wild, and the wind, I think, took it a little bit, and the referee's having a word, first of all, with the complaining player, um, who is um, the number 22, Emerson, and he's not said anything to Eva, I don't think, so maybe he didn't see anything untoward. But... Um, the game has stopped because what? Because the referee was having words with the player and when he's doing that, the play cannot progress. So he's told Josh Peck and Ross Peters that that goal kick has to be taken again. Now let's have one up the field this time instead of these. Yes, Ross is waving everybody up as well. Let's get the ball up the field. Sean East wins it, plays it to Matt Francis. Matt Francis in a tussle at the back and he's pushed over, absolutely no doubt about it. Clear push in the back from uh, Ericsson. And so it'll be a Falklands free kick right over on the far side of the field where the dugouts are, away on the other side from us. And Matt Francis will take it halfway inside the Falklands half. Left-footed ball, swings high, high. Ethan Clark goes to get it. He does, and he manages to find Ethan George. But Ethan George is pushed off the ball. So it's once again, all and win the ball back. And once again, we find Ericsson playing the ball high, high, high. Josh Peck heads it backwards. Torren Hart sprinting across there, trying to intercept. He's tussling over on the far side of the field and his flags are going up. And that voice you can hear is his father telling the, uh, the referee what he should be doing. And the referee was right up to it. He heard, he heard Michael and he did blow the whistle for a free kick because it was a, it was a foul on Torren Hart over there. Parents do get excited when their um, children are playing these uh, sports, I have to say. OK, Josh Peck will take the free kick. And everybody moves back up towards the Oland half. And Oland win it again. Now, they're winning all the free kicks at the moment, everything that goes up. Let's hope in the second half, when the wind is sort of more favourable for the Falcons, we'll see the reverse. Peterson there, back once more to Gostas. Gostas plays it to Kuhnberg. Kahnberg plays it across. Now, nice work from uh, Gilson Clark. Uh, does he still have the ball? No, he didn't, because he was sort of pushed off it, didn't quite grab it. And Eva wins a lovely, nice tackle from Eva. And he plays the two to Sean. Sean East plays, uh, finds Matt Francis away over on the left, halfway inside the half of uh, Orland. And he, Matt Francis holds the ball, still holds the ball, still holds the ball. Coming into the penalty area. Can he get the cross in? But he doesn't get the ball into the six-yard box, but he does win a corner for the Falklands. Thankfully, a bit of relief there for the Falklands. Finally, we've got the ball uh, after 20-odd minutes. We've managed to, to get a corner up there. And that was thanks to some determined running by young Matt Francis, who was advancing from his left back position. And he just went on and on and on with the ball. And finally, it was cleared off his toes by a defender from the men in red. And it will be a kick to be taken. I think Matt is going to take the kick with his left foot. That uh, all in play looks closer to 10 to the corner flag than the 10 yards and the referee agrees with me although I'm a long way away from the action at the moment in it comes it's a high one and it's an opportunity and a shot comes in the shot comes in from Torren Torren Hart up there on the edge of the six yard box came to him on his left foot and he sort of side footed it he had to take it quickly and it just went wide off the post so we do have a shot on target um, after I think it's uh, 30 minutes of action but the Falcons if you're just uh, tuning 
tuning in in the Falcons this morning, um, waiting to hear Adam's breakfast show. We have football this morning until around about 8.30. The Falcons are one goal down against Orland in this playoff match for 14, uh, 13th and 14th. Kuhnberg advancing with the ball. The blonde-haired lad plays it in, inside. Plays it inside to uh, Bloomquist, to Emerson. And Emerson plays it through over the top, trying to get... Oh, he, he was trying to get uh, Nornberg away, but once again, as uh, <coughs> excuse me, Chris was just saying, they're over-kicking and the ball is running through uh, to the goalkeeper, to Ross Peters. Falklands now have the ball through Sean East. He holds it, he holds it. He's trying to find Ethan gilson Clark, but his pass is misdirected, so it comes back to Kuhnberg. Kuhnberg, a right-footer, tr trying to find his uh, right winger, Nornberg, but instead it's intercepted there nicely in the centre of the field by Reyes. We haven't seen much of Reyes at the moment as an attacking force. And Orland win the ball back because the Falcons just can't seem to hang on to the ball at the moment. And Kunberg sprinting away. He's sprinting into the Falcons' penalty theory. He'll take a shot and it's going to be another goal. Oh, at the last minute, how could that happen? Emerson, he, he was completely clear on the back post. It, look, he had the score from that cross from Kunberg. And somehow he contrived to get it stuck between his feet. And the ball then calmly rolled past the, the post. Uh, that should have been 2 0, Chris. Absolutely, guilt edge chance there for, for Ireland. Uh, Patrick, absolutely far, far easier to score, I think, than what he managed to put it past the post. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, we had a slight reprieve there, the Falklands. Uh, this, this pitch is a bit sort of, I don't know, it looks a bit. Mm, um, bumpy in places, maybe. There's some beer patches on it, uh, sort of brown grass patches on it. Uh, near all the other fields are beautiful green grass, and not this one. Anyway, the ball's back in the all and half of the field, and Toby it gets in there and manages to win it. He's still got the ball. He turns back towards his own goal, plays it to Torren. Torren plays a short ball through to Rea, to Eva. Eva's brought down. Um, in the where and he's struggling. I hope he's not a recurrence of that injury he had in the first match. And there's a lot of shouting coming in from the uh, dugouts over there. I think it might be coming from from Wayne, perhaps. Um, but anyway, the Falcons get a free kick. It's about mm, 18, 20 yards inside the Orland half, just outside the centre circle. And Eva will take it. He's up and he's all right. He's going to take it with his right foot. And he swings it, swings it to the back post, but the big man, Peterson, comes in and wins it easily, but it comes back to Reyes. Reyes now loses, loses eight, but he wins the ball back with a beautiful, beautiful time tackle. And he, nice footwork from Reyes, uh, from Eva, and he finds Reyes, and Reyes gets a shot in, but it was from 40 yards out, and it just harmlessly ran through to the man in blue in the goal, Lundell of Orland. Peterson wins it again, or gets the ball, back from his right back and he plays it through here to Gostas. Gostas plays a long high ball but it's over, over hit, over hit and it's going to run harmlessly out right down in front of us for a throw into the Falklands. No, it didn't go out. It did not go out. And Eva is pushed over <laughs> and he gets a free kick. Well, I think he was hoping that ball was going to go out but it didn't actually go out. It was right on the line and in the end he had to do some desperate defending and thankfully he was finally pushed over there by Bowman, Daniel Bowman, the number 17, a, quite a tall lad, looking, looks like one of the older members of the squad. I think there's four of them who are over 21, and the rest are all youngsters. Gostas wins the ball in the air, and Orland are winning the ball in the air. Five headers in succession, all won by Orland. Toby is pushed over now. He sort of trod on the ball, and as he went to recover, he was pushed over. So the Falcons will get a free kick just inside their own half of the field. Um, just yard outside the centre circle to give you an idea where the position is. Josh Peck wipes his uh, face with his shirt and takes the kick, trying to find uh, the left side of the players, but unfortunately, Orland win it again in the air. And now there's uh, a pass through here, trying to, uh, to get um, Emerson away, but uh, Emerson wasn't able to sort of get things moving for his team. And there's a bit of scrappy play going on here now with the ball being given away by both teams, really. And eventually Toby puts in a bit of hard work on the far side of the field and forces the all-in player 
to give away, I think that was uh, Karlstrom to give away a throw in. Falkins take it. Gilson Clark back to Francis. Francis inside uh, to the challenging. No, Fran I think that's Matt who's ahead. I can't quite see the numbers over there. Long way away from us, and he eventually lost out, and the ball went over for a throw in to uh, Orland. And Orland have the ball once again now in the centre circle. Toby. Couldn't really do much. He uh, is forced to bring the Orland boy down. Nothing serious, just sort of pulled him down. And uh, Emerson, it was, who was fouled there. So Toby's a bit slow getting up. He has suffered groin injuries, I think, in two matches. But this looks like more like his knee. And I think the physio is going to be called on. She is running across. Toby's down just on the edge of the centre circle. So it gives me an opportunity to ask uh, Chris, what does he think of, uh, is going so far? Uh, have we got any prospects at all here, Chris, do you think? I think we do, Patrick. I think it's got a bit scrappy in the last sort of five or ten minutes. Certainly both sides um, giving up possession quite easily. We need to watch the two wing-backs because they're making a lot of runs from, from out to in um, across, across the line and, and keeping themselves on side and they're looking for that ball over the top. As I said, I think that'll be a, that could be more of an issue in the second half when the ball will hold the wind up. But uh, sorry, the wind will hold the ball up even. Um, but we've had a couple of opportunities now um, closer to the mm. to the Ireland penalty area. Um, I think we, if we can hold yeah. out to one nil to half time, certainly then with the wind in our favour, we'll, we'll have opportunities in the second half to, to go and to go and get that goal that we're looking for. Now, if you were the manager, Chris, at half time, what would you be saying to the players in the, for, for the second half? The second, you don't want to come out and, and, and go too gung-ho and go on the attack because you lose a second goal, then, then the game might run away from you. You, want to, you still want to come out, stay compact, keep trying to work on the, on the shape that you're in, um, looking to try and bring Ethan Gilson-Clark into the game as much as possible. Probably the quietest game we've seen Ethan have so far, I would say, in the tournament. Well, he hasn't got the ball, has he? He's yeah. not been given the ball. No, so no. we need to try and bring him into the game as much as we can, maybe get him to drop a bit short, get him on the ball get uh, Ethan George to, to, to run in behind and, and that's probably going to be our biggest opportunity. Right, the kickoff uh, from that free kick finally was resolved with Toby getting the treatment, he's all OK and the Falcons now win the ball back through Matt Francis and Matt is forced to turn and go back but it's nice ball control but Matt gives the ball away but it's picked up by Sean East, haven't seen much of him too much yet but he plays the ball back to Josh Peck who does clear up field and this time well done, it, well um, well Castro is able to win the ball but he's fouled he went, he won it in the air nicely. Was it, it was Castro, I think, yeah. wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. And, um, and he wins the ball nicely. I don't know um, Jose Castro and Jose, uh, is it Mateus Rios terribly well. And occasionally I do get them a little confused, but that was uh, Castro. And uh, he was dumped on the ground. So Falklands will get a free kick right on the halfway line. Over on the far side to field from us, in front of the dugouts, Matt Francis takes us. Lovely long high ball, floating in, floating in. Is there a header in there? There was a header, one there. And a shot comes in. That was good play. Sean East, that, I think it was, took that shot. The ball was well won by Ethan George, I think, in the header. Headed it across and back, and young Sean East was quickly onto the ball, and that was uh, the best shot we've had uh, in the first half. But it, unfortunately, it just went wide of the post. So all and on the attack once more. Um, Josh Pex wins the header, but he wins it but back, pushes it back. Good play by Torren Hart to Eva, Eva to, e to Ethan George. Ethan George, so unable to control the ball, so we lose it again. We're just not keeping control of that ball. And the linesman's flag, I call them linesman, referee's assistant flag goes up to indicate straight away that Nornberg was offside from that ball. That, and that was because Falcons wisely, if I may say so, are playing higher. They've moved everybody up a bit. So when those high balls come in, in the uh, halfway into the Falklands half, it catches the Orland players offside. Eva takes it with his right foot, and it falls to Matt Francis on the left side of the field. Matt holds the ball, trying to find Castro, but Castro just didn't get possession of it. Could have been a little bit overhit. Um, in all fairness to the lad. So all in get the throw and it's uh, back to Peterson inevitably. Peterson, we mention him all the time because he's, he's getting that ball in the centre of defence all the time. He plays it through to Blumquist. Blumquist now trying to get Kuhnberg away. Kuhnberg now is onside and he's running towards the Falklands penalty area. This is danger for the Falklands. And if this ball is an accurate ball, there's going to be a goal. But sure, oh, well played, Ross Peters. Ross Peters came out. You might hear some applause. He came out and he took it right off the foot of the advancing, of the advancing forward. 
Um, so nice play and brave play by Ross Peters there. So keeps the score all in one. Falklands nil. They're playing for 13th, 14th place at the Ireland Games here in Guernsey. But once again, it's uh, Bloomquist with the ball. He plays the ball through. This could be dangerous for the Falklands. But, oh, the flag goes up. Oh, my goodness me. That, I was pleased to see that flag go up on the far side. I just thought for a moment that Nuremberg was in again, but not this time. The referee's assistant had him, spotted him, and um, Torren Hart will take it. Just outside the Falklands penalty area will take this uh, free kick for the Falklands. I make it, uh, we have five, five, six minutes, a bit of added time to go in the first half. The wind seems to have died off a little bit now. Um, Toby's battling with the ball now, but unable to pick it up, but Torren Hart wins the header to Toby. Toby can't quite get hold of it. Sean East, though, manages to get it, but we seem to be always getting the ball and going backwards with it. We don't seem to be able to advance with the ball uh, at the moment. Um, that, there will be a reason for that, of course. We, we get the ball and then we seem to have, have two or three all-in players surrounding the, the Falklands man when he gets the ball, and that was clearly evident there when uh, Sean was forced to go back, but uh, someone was pushed over, so we do get a free kick, which Matt Francis will take. Everybody's moved into the all and half the field. There's a long high ball. Ethan George goes up to challenge. He's beaten in the air by a defender, and the ball goes to Orland, and Orland are on the attack once more, and there's danger here. It could be, but Reyes, Reyes mistimes his tackle, and he's going to get a yellow card for that. That's the second yellow card of the tournament. He gets a yellow card, and he puts his... Arm um, in the air in a gesture to say to the referee, that wasn't worth a yellow card. I shouldn't be now on having to walk on tender hooks for the rest of the game. He'd have to be a bit careful from now on in because it's only um, first half. So he's picked up a yellow for that to foul. And the Orland will have a free kick through Broomkist and he plays the ball back to Peterson. Peterson inside the centre circle plays it out to the right and it is Ericsson plays a long high ball. Torren Hart wins it in the air. Matt Francis picks it up to Sean. Sean Easto can only find Toby. Toby's under pressure and the Falcons lose the ball. And once again, there's an attack on here. And once again, it's uh, uh, our goalkeeper, Ross Peters, to the rescue. The man in green comes out. Josh Peck was trying to shield the ball away from the advancing Norberg and Ross Peters helped him out by coming out and throwing himself on the ground and winning the ball. It's a long high ball up again, but they're winning all those high balls that come up uh, all, and they seem to be winning every single one. And now there's an uh, opportunity here for Kahnberg. Kahnberg is running through onto that ball, but once again, Ross Peters is out right to the very corner of his penalty area to pick it up. And he bounces the ball several times, looking to see where he can go. There's nowhere really for him to go at the moment because our midfield isn't really functioning too well in that respect. Ethan Gilson Clark's hardly had a chance today because he just isn't getting any decent balls to run onto. That's got to change in the second half somehow. If he had his brother Dane Gilson Clark playing up alongside of him, I think there would be a different complexion on the game here. But fortunately Dane failed a very late fitness test. He's only had the one match. No, the, yes it was. I thought for a moment there was a hesitation that the assistant was not giving the offside. In fact, all in dispute it and say no, it wasn't offside. But the, the, the referee's assistant was absolutely certain and Bowman was uh, telling the referee no, no, it wasn't offside, but um, Carlstrom was offside, no doubt about it. Torren Hart now on the edge of the centre circle inside the Falcons half. He's forced to take the ball back a couple of yards at the, assist, in the insistence of uh, referee. Long, so yes. he's been long high ball goes up, but uh, Ethan Gilson Clark can't win that against a taller all in player. Matt Francis does pick it up. Matt Francis though loses it, but it runs nicely to Toby. Toby though loses out, and now all in win the ball again, but it. A foul. There was a foul there. I'm not sure whether it was on Toby. It may well have been. So the Falklands get a free kick away over on the far side of the field, about 18 yards or so inside the Orland half. And Matt Francis will, of course, take it with his left foot. And you want to swing it into the six-yard box, but it's low. It's low. Ethan Gilson Clark gets a nice 
touch on and oh there was just a little opportunity there for the Falklands little opportunity but it just we just couldn't take it but nevertheless all end up forced to push it out over the uh, touchline for a throw in for the Falklands and Josh Peck is telling everybody to move on up so at least Matt Francis and Torren Hart back only so Josh Peck's run all the way over from central defence to take this throw in is it a long one it's reasonably long and it uh, won by Orland unfortunately and cleared downfield by Orland only as far as Torren Hart in the centre circle Torren's forced into a bit of a quick action that he would probably have not relished because he got under pressure straight away from Orland and Orland are moving forward and moving forward but once again they are offside and once again this protest coming in there from Emerson, who's saying, I could not have been offside to the ref because I ran from my own half of the field to get the ball when it was kicked. And you can't be offside if the ball is kicked <laughs> in that, from your own half of the field. Maybe he was right, maybe he wasn't. I don't know. I didn't quite see where he was when he took off for that ball, but he's pretty upset about it. So 1-0 for Orland here against the Falkland Islands in this playoff game. This will be the last game for the Falklands in the tournament. Semi-finals of the competition later today and the finals and third place matches tomorrow. So some islands will have another game. And now the, uh, Kronberg's coming forward, Kronberg's coming forward, but some good defensive work from Ethan George, but it only falls as far as Bloomquist. Bloomquist is pushed over by Toby. Dangerous position for the Falklands. Three, four yards outside the penalty area, right down in front of us here. Referee had no hesitation in saying, I think it was actually uh, Emerson, the number 22, yep, that was pushed over. So, a free kick to be taken by, uh, who's going to take this free kick? Karlstrom, I think, the goal scorer. Karlstrom, yep. Karlstrom, the goal scorer, will, will take this uh, free kick. And number 18 is alongside of him, looking at the ball, Bloomquist. Johan Bloomquist, and I think it's going to be left to the goal scorer, Karlstrom, who's going to take it. Uh, everyone back except Ethan Gills and Clark. In it comes. It's a long one, and it's, it's just went into the side netting. At the last moment, it swerved away. I thought it was going to go inside the post, but thankfully it swirled at the last minute. Maybe the wind took it. The flags that are up behind the goal are really blowing out almost and shows how much wind there is down there. We're on this, uh, this uh, st stand that they've put up here, our scaffolding, so, and we've got a roof, a little roof over our head, so we can't really tell how strong that wind is. But for the players, it will be most disconcerting, I should imagine. Throw in in front of the dugouts to be taken by Orland on the right-hand side of the field by Ericsson. And he's been told, go back, go back, go back a bit more, says the referee. You take it from where the ball went out, not where you want to go. So it's a long high ball again, trying to defeat the offside trap. And Josh Peck is pulled over this time. Uh, he was defending, trying to shield the ball there, and he was able to do so. And in the end, the Orland player, a bit of frustration, I think, there really, from Emerson, and he pulled Josh over. So free kick just outside the penalty area on the far side of the field. Can't be many more minutes to go in this first half. Orland on the attack. Josh Peck comes in, bounces off uh, Matt Francis, runs back to the keeper, Ross. Ross will have to do something quick. He does. He gets it through to Reyes. Reyes so unable to get the ball and is back to Orland and there's a chance for Bloomquist. He's going to get a shot in. It rolls off. It's still desperation here for the Falcons. And now it's Kunberg. Kunberg's going to get a shot in. No, he can't. He's pushed out by Sean East, but still pressure on the Falcons' defence. And uh, Kunberg's number eight is away over on the right-hand side of the field now, and he's playing the ball back inside to Karlstrom. Karlstrom back to, I think that's who the advancing player might be, Eriksson. Ball comes in, and is headed clear by Torren Hart. Torren, of course, is absolutely excellent in the air, timing perfect, but he's forced to head the ball over his own goal line for a, a, throw, um, a corner kick once more to Orland. This one's on the right wing, as we call it, for the advancing team, so it may well be taken by a player with his left foot. We'll see what happens. It's Karlstrom's going over to take it. Sometimes they like to take it with, with a left footer there to swing the ball in. With this wind, it would be quite effective, but in fact, he's not. He's going to take it with his right foot from the right corner flag. 
He puts his hand in the air. It's low, it's low, it's low. It's, it's bouncing around in the area. It's still not clear. It's still danger for the Falcons. And he's, he's still got the ball. And there's a shot comes in now and it rebounds off Torren Hart. Torren Hart managed to get a rebound and he's trying to... But he, was, he wasn't really able to do anything with it. And at that moment, as the ball just runs out on the far side of the field, the referee blows the whistle for half time. He played, yeah, he played about four minutes or more, so I think. The so the half time score is Orland 1, Falcon Islands 0 here at, at, at the uh, Corbett Field. The goal scorer from the penalty was Joel like Karlstrom, who was brought down the by the uh, Eva Monsefu. Uh, that gave the penalty away. I think that's the third penalty we've conceded, fourth penalty we've conceded in the tournament, um, Chris reminds me. So, a lot to do for the Falcons in the second half. Quick summing up from you, please, Chris, before we hand back to Adam in FIRS. Yeah, Patrick, I think Troy will be reasonably satisfied with the performance. I think the shape was very, very good. Um, all under, obviously, a good football inside. They've not the ball about well. The d big danger from Orland has come from this left-hand side, their number eight, um, Kuhnberg, he's, he's, been, he's been finding um, that run on several occasions uh, with the ball over the top, coming from outside to in, and he's got, he got, it's got into some good positions. I think that save from, from Ross Peters about five minutes before half-time when he did get through and he was one-on-one, -on -one, which, which he saved really well with his feet, I think hopefully that will be extremely important um, when we come into the second half and we can, we can get on the score sheet. But we'll need to bring Ethan gilson Clark much more into the game if we can um, in, in the centre of that, in the centre of that uh, midfield. I think get him dropping in, trying to find the ball, looking for Ethan George uh, with his pace up front. Um, but overall, not a bad start. I think, um, obviously, as well, we're keeping a high line. So I want to see, I'd like to see in that second half, Ross Peters with a much higher starting position. He's spending a lot of time in his six-yard box when we haven't got the ball. I'd like to see him on the edge of his area in this second half with the, um, with the wind against the Ireland players because that ball will hold up and he can come and clear that with our high line in position. Thank you very much, Chris Island. So there we go, 1-0 at half-time for Orland against the Falklands here in Guernsey.
And welcome back to the Corbett Field. And welcome also to Falkland Island Television uh, viewers. Uh, we're here for this playoff match in the uh, Island Games football competition. We're playing for 13th and 14th place with Orland, the Finnish island, which uh, is closer to Sweden than Finland. I've just heard good news from Chris Island that the Falklands mixed archery team of Bill Chader, Kirsty Lewis and Mark Lewis are definitely assured of a silver medal. They're in the final, uh, which will probably be taking place during the second half of this game. So that's an incredible performance. So that, I think, makes it two silvers for the Falklands. In, the, in you know, archery, yeah, yeah, two silvers. Two silvers in archery and a, bron and a bronze in the competition altogether. Uh, the Island Games. Yeah. Oh, well, no. No, I'll, I'll, I'll update on that. But anyway, that that will give us a two, a minimum of uh, two silvers here at this game. Excellent performance by, by the Falklands team. Right, second half underway. Baladeros is on for Toby, who had that injury in the first half. Baladeros will bring a bit of class into the midfield with his accurate passing. This looks better. Now we're over here on the far side. Matt Francis getting over the halfway line right down in front of us, but he loses eight at the last minute. Baladeros comes in and intercepts, and the ball's back with Pete Chuderson at the back. And, and uh, uh, who was that? Gost Gostas came across and intercepted, plays it back to Bowman. Bowman plays it a further eight on the left to uh, Prom uh, Bloomquist. And Bloomquist is forced to, to kick the ball out. So much more attacking attempt from the Falcons here in the second half. Uh, Valadiros wins it from the throw and Eva unfortunately could not quite keep that ball in on the far side of the field so just in front of the dugouts it'll be a, a throw in for Orland winning 1-0 here at Corbett Field in Guernsey Peterson missed for once lets the ball run under his foot but he retrieves quickly no pressure on him and he put guts gets the ball through to to Bowman, Bowman and Bloomquist playing together and on the right hand side of the field here um, I'm trying to work out who that is is it a player that's come on, I think it is I think it's a substitute, Linus Gustafsson is on I think there and the number 6, can't quite see who's gone off, we'll find try and find out in a minute of course first time we've seen Orland play uh, at this tournament we didn't anticipate that we'd be playing them in this match I was keeping an eye on Centralina and Freuer all the time, thinking we'd probably play one of those two islands in, this, in a playoff, but in fact we uh, were one place higher than I thought, and most people thought. Nice work by Valadiros, wins the ball, trying to find Ethan Gilson Clark, but he's out headed. Ross, um, uh, Josh Peck intercepts, plays it through to Eva. Eva now in the centre circle, plays the ball through on the far side to Ethan George. Now, can Ethan George get something moving down the right? He's given, been given some help from Castro over there, but do they win a throw in? They do. This is more positive from the Falcons. The wind, whatever there is left of it now, is behind us a little bit, I think. Valadiros right over on the far side. He's lovely educated there, left foot he's got, but this time the pass that comes back to him from Eva is misdirected. So it's Orland who win the ball again inside their own half of the field. And it's won by, uh, Rhea, uh, by Eva. Eva. Gets the ball through via Baladeros to Sean East, but Sean East is pushed off the ball, so all in, win it back once more inside their own half of the field still. Falcons playing much further up. Josh Peck, arms wide, telling players, keep up, keep up, keep up. And this is what we want to see. We want to see an equaliser live in this game up for the Falcons and for the supporters. It's uh, Gustafsson, the substitute, plays that ball down on the right-hand side now, trying to get to Bloomquist away. But uh, Josh Peck comes across and intercepts, but at the expense of a throw-in. So the ball is in the Falklands half of the field. Torren Hart there coming to tackle. There's an opportunity for um, New Orleans and a shot, a left-footed shot came in there from Norberg, went right across the area, and Eva picks it away up over the far side of the field. But it's back again to Orland. And now there's a clear chance and an opportunity for a goal. Oh, some great defensive work by Ross Peters. 
he came out, managed to block the ball at the last minute and avert that danger, but that could have been 2-0. Now, here's a chance for the Falcons again. They're still inside their own half, but Sean East plays it to Ethan. Ethan Gilson-Clark, Ethan Gilson-Clark, though looking for the ball from Baladeros, but his pass was misdirected. So the Falcons under pressure once more. Matt Francis has to come back and help. He's pulled over, so the Falcons will get a free kick. The offender was Gustafsson, the substitute. Can't quite see, as I say, who he's come on for. But we'll try and work that out. Uh, Kuhnberg's still on. I think he's still on. Kahnberg's still on over on the far side of the field. Um, 17, I don't know if Emerson is still on the field. Number 22, he is still on the field. So, right, OK. Here's Reyes now, but he loses the ball. But he wins the ball back, Reyes. Well done. There's a player down on the field. But over on the far side is uh, Eva. Eva crosses the ball. Uh, up goes... Um, Gilson Clark unable to win it though, it's still in the penalty oh, area. Handball. It's a handball, there's a big handball shout coming from everybody and connected with the Falklands there, but the referee didn't want to give that. He must have deemed that the ball, well, I don't know, perhaps it bounced off the player and then his hand or something like that. All strange rules these days about how penalties are given and not given. But anyway, Peterson has the ball on the edge of his penalty area. Much better looking for the Falklands in this centre half. Baladeros there trips a player and he will get a yellow card and he says to the ref, come on, I just ran into him, but he gets a second yellow card as well. He got one the other day, so he'll have to be careful from now on in. So it was in fact uh, the goal scorer Karlstrom who was fouled. Peterson will take the free kick in, in the centre circle. Falcons players retreat and he's told to take it back. Well, that's not right, because that foul was much further into the, in the centre circle. So I can't quite understand why the referee told the all in player to take the ball out of the, semi out of the centre circle. Seems strange. But there was strong shouts for a penalty there for the Falklands for a handball. Everybody went up and shouted, the players and all the Falklands bench over there. So, I don't know what's going on. Oh, there's, an, there's another change coming up now. A couple of changes coming up for uh, for Orland. Um, can't quite see who they are. We'll see if we find out who's gone off. 14 and 18 went off, didn't they? Did they go off? And there's a tall boy coming on now over on the right. Here on this side of the field, he was 23, I think. And Chris is just marking them on the paper for me. Uh, we'll see who the other one was. Ross Peters is forced to come out and head the ball from outside his box. Very, very keen anticipation by Ross. And now Reyes passes the ball back to Eva. Eva just hoofs the ball up into the other half of the field, just trying to get something going for the Falcons. But Ethan Gilson Clark just has not been able to get to ball because it's just not been given to him today. He's, he's just not had any opportunity today. And I think, I don't know, I hope Dex Bonner will be fit to come on. I think we need somebody there with a bit of pressure, with somebody with a bit of an attacking instinct to come on and try and get things moving and take on the uh, ball and defenders. But Chris is doing his very best here to help us out by, by looking at the substitutes and seeing who they are. My writing at the bottom is not very good. I just copied them down as quickly as possible, who the subs were for Orland. They've made, what, that three, I think they've made already. Uh, Falklands have the one substitute. Toby went off, uh, and Anders Baradiros came on. Thank you. So, a little bit of interpassing in the defence from Orland, passing across from the back. Gostas to Peterson. Peterson under pressure. Oh, under pressure from, from uh, Ethan. Ethan could score and he, oh, he was through. He took it with his right foot. He hit the keeper on the legs. The ball's still in the penalty area. Another chance coming in and this time a shot comes in from Reyes and the ball goes safely into the keeper's hand. Well, this time Ethan did well. To, he got the better of Peterson. He dispossessed him. He was on his right foot. Uh, he scored, I think, with his right foot the other night. But this time, unfortunately, it bounced off the goalkeeper, but Fulton's on the attack once more on the far side of the field and it's um, trying to see who that is away over on the far side of the field. I think it might have been uh, Ethan George 
and he's pushed off the ball and there's a foul, surely there's a foul there against uh, Reyes, uh, no Eva sorry, so Eva gets a free kick, he hoists it high, he's trying to find his fellow, uh, uh, no not he's a Peruvian of course and the Reyes lad is a Chilean, but it's fellow South American let's say, let's put it that way then. So it'll be a, f a throw in anyway. It didn't come to anything that attacking a uh, little bit of play by the Falklands, but at least they're getting the ball forward more. They're giving the all in defence something to think about this half, which they didn't in the first. If you just joined us back home, it's 1 0, a penalty in the first half scored by Bloomquist for a foul by Eva. And now Josh Peck's having to do something and he pushes the ball back with his head. Well done. And back to the keeper, Ross Peters. Ross. Ross was anticipating that, he was right on the edge of the box once more and he kicks it high, high, high down, trying to find Sean East but it's one, instead it's won by one of the uh, all in, uh, midfield players and it's a big tackle, bush, pushing and shoving going on by Josh Peck and Josh Peck is said to be the offender and he protests to the ref, everybody protests to the ref from the Falklands side all in think they're going to pull a fast one here and take a free kick and get away and in fact the lad on the far side, uh, Kahnberg, was into the Falkness penalty area, but the referee calms it all down. Come on now, he says, explaining to Josh Peck why he's given the free kick against Josh. Josh was decked, but maybe there was a bit of pushing and pulling and shirt pulling that we didn't see from here. So we're up on this scaffolding. We're looking down on the play today. This is the best vantage point we've had of any of the games so far. And I hope it reflects on the uh, pictures that you'll see on FITV as well when you watch this match if you incline to tune that way later on tonight I think it'll be on anyway at the end of it all calm down a free kick will be given by referee to all and all and take the free kick Gustafsson that one of the substitutes get it and over on the far side of the field Matt Francis uh, has the ball I think that's Matt Francis over there isn't it yes Matt Francis is going to throw it. The Tannoy system's right in the way there now. But anyway, he throws in. It's won by Orlin. Matt Francis wins it back. He's pushed, he's pushed, but he gets up quickly, twists and turns, and this time he's pushed right over and no hesitation from the referee. The whistle goes, free kick. Matt Francis in his pink boots will take it. And it's high, high down into the area. When are Sean? It's up in the air. Come on, Sean, Sean East. But Sean can't quite win it, but at least he will get, or the Falklands will get a throw in. Sun's coming out now for the first time today. It's warmed up a little bit. Matt throws it down the wing. And now number 23, who might have been the sub, I think he might be a sub, he is Sundberg. He goes flat on his face. Sean East is said to be the offender. He protests. Referees tells him why he gave it. And he doesn't give the yellow card. Bit of frustration now, I think, from young Sean had his 20th birthday two days ago here on the island. Now there's defensive uh, play here as always, back and forward across the defence. Peterson, Peterson plays it forward. Josh Peck intercepts to Sean East. Sean East to Balladeros, nice ball from Balladeros. Through here is Reyes, got a chance, got a chance, half a chance. And, but he fouls, he fouls the, the defender as he goes through. That was nice anticipation there by uh, Balladeros. Played Ethan gilson Clark through. Ethan let beautiful ball through to Reyes, but Reyes just lost possession and then he was forced to uh, commit a foul against the defender. So it'll be a free kick for Orland in their own penalty area. The underworked goalkeeper, I suppose we could call him Lundahl, hasn't had much to do. Two saves this half he's, he's made. Uh, and there's a change for the Falklands coming up. And I think who comes off? Uh, 17's going off, which is Castro. Yeah. And Ethan Gilson Clark, I think, is he going off? No. No, it looks like he's, no, he's coming off. Deck Bonner so, is coming on. Castro and Ethan George have gone off. Ethan George has gone off, and who's come on for Ethan George? Declan. Uh, Declan. Declan. And Dane's come on for. Uh, oh, and Dane has come on. Dane's come on, yeah. Well, we didn't think Dane would feature in this game at all. Now, this is interesting for the Falklands. Dane Gilson Clark joins his brother Ethan up front, and let's hope they give us a good attacking option as they did against the Isle of Man and Declan's come over on the right hand side. Much more positive uh, attitude here now from the Falklands. They're going to go for it. One nil down. They've got to go for it if they want to get back in this game. I don't know what happens if they equalise, whether they play extra time or it goes to pens. I've no idea. 
we will see if that happens. We won't uh, count our chickens yet, just yet on that, but let's hope we can force an equaliser from somewhere. We've still got a long way to go in this second half. Gold. Oh. Gold for the Falklands, I'm just told, by Chris Einan. Gold for the Falklands in archery, in the mixed... Mixed knockout. Mixed, mixed knockout. They had to work their way right through to the final and they've won the gold. Bill Chater, Kirsty Lewis and Mark Lewis. Well done indeed to those three. Absolutely brilliant result. Gold for the Falklands. Only our second gold ever in Ireland Games. Graham Didlick got the first in 20, no, 1999 in Gotland. I remember that well. Well, fantastic there for those three. And particularly for the young lady in the team, Kirsty. She did, I think she was sixth in earlier on in the competition, sixth or seventh, and here she is now with a gold medal at these games. So it's worth getting up for in the Falklands, even if we lose this game, to hear firsthand that we have a gold medal at these Island Games. Right, falls back in play. And uh, Baladeros challenging, and he's still going for the ball, but he just loses out there. So many changes in that all in team now. I've got a job to keep up with them. But Deck Bonner's on, and Dane Gilson Clark is on for the Falklands, and Baladeros is on, Andreas Baladeros. That's our three changes so far. Right, here we go again. Long high ball goes down, and Dane Gilson Clark's challenging for it. Ethan wins it though. Ethan trying to play through to Deck. Deck wins it now. Deck's still yeah. on the ball. Deck shoots. Yeah! And he scores! And he scores! Deck Bonner scores! He's just come on and he scored! He scored! Those changes straight away. Well, would you believe it? Within a few minutes, we have gold medal news and we have a goal indeed. And Deck slides in. Be careful with those knees, Deck. He slides right over on the touchline to the Fulton supporters. And I can see Neville. Neville Hayward is almost on the field clapping and cheering down there. Be careful, Neville, you might get a yellow card. But a great excitement. That was great work there. Ethan Gilson Clark was involved with Dane. Give us a, the build up there, Chris. Pull through the middle and uh, it, it, fell, it fell to, to Ethan Gilson Clark. Bounced up. He managed to get a header in. Declan's first touch was immaculate with his left foot. Just set it up perfectly on his right foot. The goalkeeper for the Ireland team isn't the biggest, to be fair, that we faced so far in the competition, and uh, Declan's managed to curl into the top corner. Absolutely brilliant finish. Yep, 1-1. One, one. Now, this is much better in this second half. This is more like it. We're, we're an attacking force, and Reyes there in, unintentionally uh, trying to hook the ball over his head, uh, kicks the, uh, the thigh or maybe uh, somewhere else off the uh, uh, player Bloomquist, uh, Karlstrom, and the uh, referee gives a free kick right on the halfway line to Orland. So here we go, it's a playoff match and it's 1-1. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, for first, second, or whether it's uh, 100 and 101. It's all very important for both sides to hear, to see where they can finish finally at these Ireland Games competition. Orland will come out, the Fultons now, I'm sure they will, and they are. They're attacking down the right-hand side, right down by the corner flag. And there's a tussle going on there with Matt Francis and his opposition player. I can't see who he is from here because we, we have to lean over the scaffold and look under the tannoy to see what's going on down in that bottom corner. And nevertheless, it ends up being a throw-in for Orland. The men in red, Fultons in white today, blue shorts. White Sox, long high ball comes in the area and Fulton's under a bit of pressure, can they get it clear? Uh, all in player goes down but so does Baladeros with him. The referee says no, no foul. The goalkeeper there at the back, Lundl, is uh, shouting instructions to his team members in Swedish. Although they, are, they do belong to Finland, Orland. But that is the language, if you go there by ferry you, you, t you go from Sweden. That's where the Falklands team went in 209. Sean East, though, unable to control the ball there, just sort of stood on it at the last minute. So we'll be wanting to get an, uh, to build up on that uh, goal that we scored that equaliser. There's plenty of time yet, but both teams will be going for the winner here. That's absolutely sure. They won't be settling for a point. There's no, no need for a point here in a playoff match. It's all about winning and improving your placing. Right, it's uh, Klunberg. Klunberg over on the right-hand side plays it. 
to inside to Bloomquist, gets the ball back. He twists and turns with the ball, and he's pulled over by Sean East, and I think Sean East this time will get the yellow card. Yep, he was warned a little while ago by the ref, and now this time he gets the yellow. So I think we've got three players on yellow at the moment. So they need to be a bit careful from now on in. We don't want to go a, a, a man down here at this stage of the match. A free kick will be taken by Karlstrom, who scored the penalty in the first half that gave Orland a 1-0 lead after 20 minutes. Fultons have equalised through Declan Bonner, the substitute. And now it's a free kick, and we were caught napping there, I'm afraid, with that free kick, but thankfully it runs right across the far side of the field, and there's a challenge going on over there between Reyes and I can't see who the player is from Orland, but eventually uh, Baladeros wins it, but he puts, uh, I think it's Reyes under a bit of pressure. Reyes is still trying hard, trying to get that ball away, and eventually it runs off an Orland player, it does, and it's a throw in for the Falklands, halfway inside the Orland half, way over on the far side of the field. And does that look like Jordan Betts? Is, is that him over there, uh, uh, limbering up on the far side of the field? I can't, it looks like it might be. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, he's got a chance. Hmm? He's got a chance to play. He's got a chance to play, apparently. Well, he went to, to uh, Gotland and didn't get to play because he was too young and he's had injuries ever since he arrived here. So, anyway, Eva challenges there and the all in player goes down, lies on his back. Eva's on a yellow card and the uh, referee comes across and the all in player made a meal of that, I think, because he's up very, very quickly. Uh, no harm done and thankfully no more cards but it will be a free kick for Orland right over on the far side of the field just outside the centre circle mm, 20 yards or so inside the Falkness half since the goal the Falkness really haven't been able to get going again and get into the opposition half which we want to see them do but of course Orland are desperate now to get back and restore this, uh, this lead that they had balls cleared uh, downfield by the Falklands and running forward to try and get hold of it is um, still coming in Dane Gilson Clark to his brother and oh the pass was just slightly misdirected but it's still all it's not lost Sean East picks it up Sean East crosses the ball oh and a chance for Ethan Gilson Clark oh he puts his hand in his, his, his head in his hand that was nice play by Dane Gilson Clark it went to, to Ethan he couldn't quite control it but it ran nicely for Sean East out, out on the left side of the penalty area he crossed it and Ethan just misdirected it wide of the post. So close to taking a 2-1 lead here now. Falklands, though, playing much, much better in the second half. Sean there, trying to grab it. And, and Reyes, Reyes comes in with, with a really strange, nasty tackle. And I don't know why he did that. There was, there was no need to do it. There was, there was no danger to Falklands. And he picks up a yellow card. The, come on, yes, Josh is saying, come on, boys, discipline, discipline. And quite rightly, too, there was no need for him to, to, to throw himself in uh, and, and risk and he, the, the, the tackle. The lad is up, the, the 23, the big lad is, is, is up. Uh, he's all right, there's nothing wrong with him. But, um, of course, naturally, he went down screaming. And, the, and that uh, does influence the referee. So, it will be a free kick here for, to be taken by... Gustafsson. Jordan Betts coming on for Eva. Now it's going to be another change for the Falklands, I think. Uh, who's Jordan's coming on. Jordan's coming on. Eva's gone off. Torren will go to right back. Evans, Eva's gone off. Yeah. OK, Torren's gone to right back yeah. and Jordan will come into centre of defence. Chris uh, Ironen keeps good track of all these changes and what the formations is. So, very grateful for his uh, presence here. And... Well, this is the first opportunity. Jordan Betts finally gets to kick a ball in the Ireland Games. Good to see that happening. And now Falklands are under pressure straight away from that free kick. And the ball rebounds safely off a Orland player straight into the hands of uh, Ross Peters, the, the Falklands keeper, all in green. Long high ball now. Sean East, can he get hold of it? He does. He wins it nicely in the air, trying to find Ethan Gilson Clark. But unfortunately, Ethan can't quite grab that ball, so it falls kindly for Orland. And they're attacking down the left. But oh, that's a, a, a pretty awful look, looking pass that was. It went away out, so it'll give Torren Hart a throw, almost on the halfway line. And uh, 
He throws it down to Dane, Dane Gilson-Clark. But Dane can't do anything much with that ball, so it goes for a throw in. And now Jordan's got a chase on here because Falklands are under a lot of pressure. They're under a lot of pressure and it could be a goal. No, Jordan was just a bit slow on the, on the turn there, on that one. Um, just freshly on, of course. So we have to make allowances for that. And already he looks like he might be limping uh, there as he came away from that. Josh Peck came in to help him but neither of them could stop the Orland player from shooting for goal, but it went wide, right across the face of the goal. Matt Francis to Balladeros, Balladeros to Sean East, Sean East back to Matt Francis, Matt Francis finds Sean East, Sean East though tussled off it, pushed off it, so instead it goes inside to Orland, attacking again, and I think that was Balladeros who just wanted to get rid of that ball and get it down the field and give time to the Falklands to compose themselves once more but it'll be a throw in for Gustafsson to take for Orland. They're all in red today. Balladeros comes in and intercept, intercepts it. Reyes, just being booked. Reyes plays Matt Francis, but Matt's under pressure, but he gets it back to Reyes, but Reyes' pass is short, and now the Falcons are under pressure again. And Balladeros is challenging for the ball. Josh Peck is trying to help out. And the Falcons are, are, are under pressure once more. It's over on the right-hand side. Will there be a cross comes in? A cross comes in. It's headed on. It's headed on. And Torren Hart has to come in from his right-back position to help out. And he ha manages to get it to Ethan Gilson-Clark. To Dane. Back to Ethan. But Ethan can't quite hold on to that ball. So eventually the captain of all and uh, Gostas passes the ball back to his keeper who's out on the edge of his area. He kicks it high. Matt Francis gets it on his chest. And, but unfortunately the ball ran off his chest and ran straight to an Orland player. Falklands just losing their way a little bit at the moment and things are not looking as good as they were when Declan Bonner scored that equaliser for us about some 10 minutes ago. It's all Orland at the moment, it's all Orland and they're coming forward once more. They've still got the ball, Blumquist playing it back, over, plays it over to the far side of the field to the substitute and he is offside. The substitute is offside, that was uh, Sundberg, that was Morgan Sundberg. If you can hear any shouting, it's the keeper from Orland who is shouting his way outside his penalty area and he's shouting at his uh, team what he wants them to do. Right, 1-1 one, one it is. What will we have if it goes full time? Will it be extra time and penalties? I've no idea. But it'll be, have to be resolved some way, this game. Long high ball coming in now. Deck Bonner's challenging, Eason's challenging. There's still, still an opportunity for the Falklands, but no, they've, they've lost out to Bloomquist. Bloomquist tries to find the substitute Sundberg on this far side of the field. Instead of that, the ball sails into the stand. A very nice stand here, holding about 700 spectators. And there's quite a lot of spectators in there today, too. Um, that was uh, Balladeros trying to find Dane, but not quite getting there. Reyes wins the ball. Reyes still got the ball. That's nice. That's better play from Reyes. Who can he go to? He's looking. Where can he pass the ball? He passes it to Ethan, Ethan Gilson-Clark, who sees more of the ball in his first second part of the second half than he did throughout the first half. And it's, it's, it's going to be, to be a corner. A, a corner? No, it wasn't a corner. Well, well, well. I thought Shawnee said that it came off the defender from Orland, but the referee didn't agree with him. Oh, and it's a mistake here now by the defence. There's a chance for Dane. Dane Gilson, can he hold the ball? He's still got the ball. He shoots. Oh, and it's saved over the top by the keeper. And a defensive error gave Ethan Gilson Clark the ball. He passed to his brother Dane. Dane was coming away from the uh, defenders and suddenly he twisted and turned beautifully and he fired in a shot and the ref, the uh, goalkeeper despairingly managed to get a hand to it and pushed it over the bar. Some nice attacking play there between the two Gilson Clark brothers. It's more like it. I thought you could take corners from either side of the field, Chris. Oh no, that's, that's only goal kicks now, is it? They've changed the law so many times since you and I played, Chris. Yeah. They have, yeah. Now a good movement there from... Uh, from Ethan um, to close down the defender very, very quickly and a nice square ball there to his brother Dane who whose shot was, was going in all the way but the keeper had to make the save and push it over. Right, Sean East is going to take it I think with his left foot it swings in, it swings in, it swings in and there's a chance again for the Falklands and it might be another... Uh, no, the Falklands say that it came off a defender for another corner but once again, the well, the referee looked across the referee's assistant in all fairness who said no, pointed to a goal kick. So... 
There we go. Lundell tells the boys, go on up, go on up, he says. I think that's what he said anyway. So they are moving up the field. The time is still... I think we've had about probably half an hour of the second half. Didn't quite get the start time, I'm afraid. Trying to grab a quick cup of coffee there. And uh, it's so well appointed, these places. They've all got nice canteens and coffee available and beers and things like that if you want them. And, and so many people give their time to come and help here at the Island Games. There was a workforce here when I arrived this morning just after 9 o'clock, preparing the field, watering the field, marking the field. People in the toilets, cleaning the toilets for where the, the players would be. Uh, it, it's quite amazing the effort they, an island puts in through these volunteers. They, they don't get paid to do it. They're volunteers who come and help. Mostly older, elderly folk, folk I have to say too, who are helping out. It gives them something to do. And of course they drive around, they drive attaches around and they drive the chairmen and people around. I've actually hired a car here myself to get around. I find it much easier. And... Uh, go to the different venues. Right, Matt Francis throws it to Ethan Gilson Clark. Can, yes, Sean East does well to keep it in. Back to Matt. Matt struggles, but he still wins. He's back to Sean. Back to Balladeros. Nice play. Balladeros a bit short there, trying to find Ethan. Ethan's still challenging for the ball. Win, he wins the ball back. Well played. And now we've still got the ball. Ethan, now through to Matt Francis. Sean East plays to Matt Francis. Matt Francis trying to go down the wing. He's forced off by, by two players, and he does a little push there because he was a bit unhappy, I think. And the referee, though, he lets, he lets them off with it. And, but they say handbags or something, don't they? And, and Matt's still with the ball, and he's pushed over. So the referee says, well, you pushed the guy before, so I'll let him off. Balladeros, a lovely ball from Balladeros. Can Sean East keep it in? He does, and he crosses it with his left foot, but it doesn't fall to Ethan. It falls instead to Reyes. Reyes back to Ethan. Ethan to Deck Clark, to Deck Bonner. Deck Bonner shoots, and the, ref, the uh, goalkeeper forced to go down to his right and grab the ball. But that's much, much better play from the Falklands here. Really good work between Balladeros, Francis, East and the two Gilson Clarks, and finally a shot came in, and it was saved by the keeper from Orland. 1-1, as we go into the final stages of this match. It's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> and is it Deck Bon is away again? Can Deck, Deck lobs the ball, lobs the ball, and it over the bar, unfortunately, over the bar. We're getting shots in on target at the moment. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, attacking-wise, Patrick, we've, we've actually been on top really for the last five minutes. Um, I say good play down here on the left-hand side. Man, Sean and, and, and Andres are involved. Ethan is much more in the game. Ethan Gilson got much more in the game in this second half and really, really causing problems. Uh, just dropping off a few yards from, from the front line alongside his brother, finding those pockets of space in front of the Ireland defence and, and, uh, and certainly creating two or three chances now for the Falklands. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Uh, back under play from that goal kick. Uh, on balls on the halfway line. Up go the heads, up go the heads, up go the heads. Reyes is challenging now and for the space base. And um, this is all oh, Falklands are under pressure now. This is danger for the Falklands. And can Ross Peters come out? Ross Peters does come out. Dependable Ross. He comes out and just at the last minute and grabs the ball. The Falklands were caught a little bit open there. And I don't like the look of um, Jordan Betts here. He, in terms of his limping, he doesn't look to me to be 100% fit at all. And he did have one run, and after that run, he looked to me to be limping a little bit. Anyway, there's a tussle going on in the centre. Andres, please back off. You've had a yellow card. Don't get involved. Well, he doesn't. Referee says, OK, free kick for Orlin. No further action taken. And Falklands retreat. Everybody goes back inside the Orland half for this free kick. It's on the halfway line. It's over on the far side of the field from where we are, in front of the dugouts. Right in front of the Orland dugout, in fact. It's a long, long, low ball coming in. And it's the number 21. Shoots and it's into the side netting, into the side netting. Did someone get a touch? No, no one got a touch. So, goal kick for the Falklands. Very vociferous goalkeeper here from all in, in, down in front of us. He's really shouting the instructions out. The free kick, uh, the goal kick from uh, Ross wasn't very well directed. Jordan Betts comes out, um, but unfortunately d gives it straight to an all in player. Oh, and uh, that Balladeros is taken right out by the 
Orland player, and rightly the referee gives him a yellow card. That was a bit of retribution, is it? They say, uh, I think there, wasn't it, Chris? I've thought for the earlier tackle. I think so, Patrick. I think Andreas had had a couple of words with, with him when he was on the ground as well. Uh, to maybe to, to maybe say that he was he was maybe faking it a little bit, so he's obviously gone and had got his own back on and dressed there. Well, lip reading from here, I think he said in Spanish, "You're really really quite a nice bloke," <laughs> but maybe he said something something else that we didn't quite see. I don't know. Uh, and Andres is up anyway. He, he rolled around a bit. He he got the free kick. The yellow card went to the Orland player, and Jordan Betts will take the free kick just inside the Falklands half and. We we'll want to get this a good one. We want to see it bounce on the edge of the penalty area and give our forwards a chance. It does come in. It is high. It is high. And it's cleared, though, by a header. But uh, Belladeros is back to De Deck Bonner. Oh, Deck Bonner there trying to get... Uh, who was that? He tried to get in there. Couldn't Dane. quite see who that was. Dane. But Dane wasn't able to pick it up. But we still won the ball. And Reyes now on the ball. But he just loses out, overruns it a bit. And Falklands have lost the ball back there now. But Orland are forced to pass the ball back to Gostas. Gostas. There it is, and Gostas gives the ball away to Sean East. Now, will Sean East shoot? Play Sh shoot, Sean. That's he plays it through to Ethan Gilson Clark. Can he get the shot in? No, he can't at the moment. It's a tackle, a last minute tackle from, from, the, uh, from the player from Orland. And Matt Francis says, Oh, there's going to be trouble here. No, there isn't. Matt Francis wisely drops the ball. Matt was appealing for a corner kick. Referee just calmly said, No goal kick and Matt was hanging on to the ball. Well, the other day, when it was a free kick, Gozo were playing, and uh, the op opposition player from Jersey held on to the ball under his arm, so the Gozo player said, I'll have the ball, so he head-butted him, and that was the end of him, and he was off. He, he didn't see any more action in that game uh, for all Gozo player. But they did well here. They first time in the games, and they won two football matches, so they'd be very pleased with their performance. Right, ball's back in action. 1-1, one, one, minutes... Ticking away. I think we're probably on 35 minutes anyway with in the second half. Much, much more competitive game in the second half. Matt Francis throws it to Dane Gils to Ethan. Ethan back to Matt. Nice play. Sean East to Sean East. Oh, Sean's pass was just over over hit. Went straight to an all-in defender. He was looking for Dane Gilson Clark. But Torren Hart's up there, he wins it to Deck Bonner, nicely brought down by Deck Bonner. Deck Bonner, though, unable to find Balladeros. We're playing a bit risky at the back. We seem to just have one man at the back at the moment, and we're under a lot of pressure again. And Ross Peters is forced to come out and outside the area and kick that ball clear, but straight to an Orland player. Now it's way on the right with Gustafsson. Back to Sundberg, Sundberg to Gustafsson. Inside on the halfway line, inside to Peterson. Peterson, the central defender, being involved in everything, and eventually Balladeros on a yellow card is forced to give away a free kick. It was just a little trip, nothing, uh, nothing more serious than that. But uh, we're heading at the moment. I think we're heading for extra time. I'm not 100% sure. There is another game to be played here. I think it is at 2:30 this afternoon. So there's plenty of time uh, to have extra time if it, if it is needed. But will someone get a late? Winner now. Does that look? Is Ross? Is Ross Peters suffering an injury? Hmm? Pointing at his boot. I think there's something wrong with his boot. Maybe. Might be some. Yeah, he came out there quickly to kick the ball clear from outside the box. It looks like he's got a in little injury because the physio is is on once again. Well, how do you see it going now, Chris uh, Einan, please? It's 50 50 at the minute, Patrick. The, the, the game's going end to end, absolutely no doubt. The Falklands are right back in this from an attacking, force, um, attacking point of view, um, where they weren't really getting much joy at all in that first half. But every time we now come forward with the ball, especially down this left hand side with Francis and, and Sean East, and, and when Ethan Gilson Clark gets involved, we look dangerous. Um, we're getting bodies in the box. Um, Ethan and, and Dane are, are always there as an option on the edge of the air or getting in the box. It's, it's, it's been a much improved attacking performance in this second half. Yep, it is. We've had to go for it. And as you said at half-time, they had to be more positive, had to bring on players who could get the ball forward. We just, we just simply weren't getting the ball forward. Right, free kick it is for Orland. And, and the referee... Oh, and Orland players down, but the referee gives the Falklands a free kick. Uh, yep, yep, I just wondered what was going on there, but it, there must have been an infringement prior to that Orland player dropping down to the ground. He went down like a bird, but he, he got up pretty quickly. 
No, no uh, penalty. Torren Hart hammers the ball downfield, trying to find Deck. Overruns it though. Deck can't get it, but he puts the Allen player under possession and under pressure, and he wins the throw. Allen hoofing it clear. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Betts wins that well, and. It's bouncy, bouncy ball at the moment. It's going bouncing from one player to another. Two players are down in a heap together. Matt Francis is up quickest. Baladeros trying to get an educated pass through with his wonderful left foot that he's got. One of the veterans of the team now. I think this will be his last game, but he served the Falcon as well as the, uh, the waterfront man restaurant manager. And um, here we go again. Jordan Betts, a beautiful, beautiful tackle. That was great tackle. Well, I said he might have been carrying an injury, but my goodness me, he certainly put in, did the business there. So the Falcons once again trying to put pressure on this all in defence, but uh, Torren Hart goes across to attempt to win the ball, but I think well, well, he's definitely given away a throw. No, he's given away a free kick, in fact, the referee says. And Baladeros, who seems to be everywhere at the moment, one moment he's on left, in, on the left, on the halfway line, and then now he's over sort of on the right side in the other half of the field. So... He certainly is doing the business since he was brought on. Well, the Falcons get a free kick out of that. I really don't know how, and Chris Einan shakes his head and agrees with me. So the Falcons will get a free kick, and Torren Hart will take it just inside the all and half the field on the far side. A long high ball comes in. Uh, Ethan wins it well, but unfortunately no one close to help him. Josh Peck must come and get this quickly. He does get it quickly. He's trying to find Sean East. It's up in the air. And uh, Baladeros goes for it. He doesn't quite get it, but Reyes gets it to Baladeros. Baladeros trying to find Ethan, and it just runs away from Ethan. Not his fault. It was just running away, and the wind probably took it a bit, and it ran harmlessly through to the goalkeeper Lundell in the all-in goal, the man all in blue. Up it goes, and there's a bit of tussling going on, and Jordan Betts is in amongst it. And a beautiful ta uh, tackle there by Torren, I think, wins the ball. There's players going down, dropping down like flies and getting up and dropping down. It's really hectic in there now. They know everything's to play for. It, it could be the gold medal match, but it isn't. But that's how it'll feel because everyone will know that it's in, the next goal will probably win this game for one of the teams and prestige now Ethan no help though from Ethan can he find his brother Dane he's under pressure Ethan Gilson Clark lovely ball to Deck Bonner Deck Bonner through to Sean East can Sean get it he's down in front of us Matt. Sean's inside the penalty Tell area. Him, Matt. he holds the ball he holds the ball Tell he him, tries to cross it and Matt has, Matt's come to help him but this time he was, perhaps, perhaps Matt could have got forward a bit quicker but he's probably feeling a little bit tired from four hard matches that he's played in this tournament and he did come to help young Sean East, but unfortunately he had to give away a throw so it's right on the touchline down in front of us here on below us because we're on a high scaffolding today it's here for the women's final tomorrow and we've made use of it and Baladeros as well to win it and he's trying to find Ethan Gilson Clark but the Orland defence is under pressure and they hoof it clear anywhere and Jordan Betts tries to come and win it but he doesn't quite get it but Torren Hart comes and helps him and he tries to find where Deck Bonner should have been or would have been on the right, but Deck is a little bit deep at the moment, so all in pick it up from the back from Gustas. Gustas plays it forward to Bloomquist, and once again they're attacking down the left hand side of the field, and the ball is out. Yes, all the shouts came from the Falklands bench over there that the ball had gone out of all in player, so it'll be a throw for the Falklands. Pressure, pressure now. They must keep going. They've got to work to get this goal, this winning goal, I think it will be, if they score. I can't see there will be enough time for anyone to come back if a goal is scored now. Reyes tasseling away. Torren Hart plays it inside. He's, he is absolutely taken out there by an all-in player. Come on, referee. Let's see the card. No, we're not going to see the card. But Torren is limping, but he's up. I'm not sure where his dad is in the second half. He was, he's probably on the other side of the field now that Torren's playing over on the right side. In the first half, Torren was playing closer to where we are. Um, is that, who, what's happening there? Is, is that Jordan going off? I think so. Who was brought down? Was it Jordan or Torren? Torren. Torren was brought down. No, that's what I thought. I think yeah, the knee's maybe just been too so, sore for Jordan, so it looks like uh, Axel's coming on. Oh, poor, I feel so sorry for Jordan. 
He went to Gotland six years ago and he couldn't play because he was too young. And nobody checked the rules. And now here he is. He's been brought on. He ran hard for that first ball. Looked to me then that he was injured. Since then, put in some sterling defensive work. And now there he is, limping off. And quite understandably, the lad is distraught. Well, uh, Axel's come on, Axel Reed. He hasn't had much play in this uh, tournament, but here's a chance for the lad now to shine. See how he can do it. So Valadiros will take it with the left foot. It's high, it's high, it's going in. No, it's cleared by the big number 20, Patterson. He's there with his head, but Josh Peck comes rushing in. Careful, Josh. And he takes the ball. And now Reyes holds the ball. He won't give it back, so he's pushed over. Oh, it's getting a bit feisty out there, I think, uh, Chris, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. I think they know what's on the line, both teams, Patrick. Um, it's, uh, there's only a few minutes left, as you said, and any, any mistake or any, any good bit of play is probably going to win this match. So, yeah, everybody's a bit on edge, I think. <laughs> yeah. OK, so uh, it's, a, it's the goalkeeper. He's still shouting the instructions down there. He hasn't stopped in this second half. We, we hear him constantly. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, he's way outside of his penalty area. The free kick is halfway inside the all and half. And Peterson is giving instructions. And here it goes. It's a long, high one. And there's a big chase on going down the right side of the ring. The Falcons are under pressure once more. And some, it, a player goes down from all in, appeals, appeals for a free kick. But they're not getting it. And what happened was there uh, somebody get a card there or was it no, no oh it was offside okay well, after all that shouting and appealing by all and it ended up that the uh, referee's assistant had the flag up we cannot see him from here because of the tannoy uh, which um, is on the end of the stand it, it just obstructs our view right down in that bottom right hand corner but we, otherwise we've we've had a great vantage point here today long high ball coming in yeah, ethan gilson clark yeah, so there it is there it is yeah He's really got renewed energy this second half because he's had some help uh, in the second half and he's really showing his skill here to now. I wouldn't say that Dane's 100% fit. He looks to me like he might limp a little bit, but he's on there and he's made a big difference, um, giving his brother some support. Josh Peck's come right forward from centre-back, right down below us, to throw the ball. Dane, in there, in there, Dane. In there, Dane, he says, in there. And the sun's Ooh. shining off his bald head as he throws that <laughs> ball in, but it's cleared up by Orland and it's cleared further by Orland. And it's still, Orland's have still got it and they're going down the right. And now we must stop that ball and it's going through the centre and it's a chase on here. What can, yeah. what can happen? Oh, well played, Ross Peters. He advanced right out to the edge of the area and he threw himself at the feet of that forward. Risking his life for the Falklands, he did there, the lad. Well done. And he grabbed that ball and said, right, it's mine, and the danger is over. But Orland are on the attack once more. Down the left-hand side of the field by Gustafsson, the substitute, and he's working his way into the Falklands penalty area, but at the last moment, he's dispossessed there. And Ethan gilson Clark now inside his own half, but he loses out. He can't quite control the ball. So it's Orland now pushing forward, pushing forward at the moment. And... Once again, they're trying to get that through, and this could be this could be the winner. And what's oh, it, Ross Peters? He threw himself in front of the Orland player, and he took that ball right off his foot at the last minute when we were under intense pressure. We are leaving big gaps at the back now. My goodness me! Every time they get that ball, you think they might score Orland, but nicely won by Dane Gilson Clark to find Ethan, but Ethan can't quite get away. Baladeros, no, Reyes comes to challenge and Reyes is fouled. So the Falklands will get a free kick now inside the Orland half, just outside the centre circle. And Ethan is up. Yeah, he went down there in the tackle, but he's up. They're moving forward. Who's going to come forward? Who's going to take it? It'll be Baladeros, I expect. Scored that wonderful uh, free kick against Yunus Mon. One of the best goals I've seen from the Falklands in every Ireland Games match that we've played. Deck Bonner decides to go back just in case there's a breakaway. In comes a high ball, in comes a high ball. And it just rolls, it just went a bit too fast. Torren Hart had come forward all the way forward from the defensive position. And now he's got to go all the way back. It's a long way back when you're coming up to 85 minutes in a match. And it's your fourth match in five days. 
even if you are a, 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 an energetic and healthy young man, it's tough going. From the free kick, from the goal kick, Balladeros is flattened. Referee says play on. Sean East now, will he get it? No, he backs off it. And now the Falklands are under a bit of pressure again. But Balladeros comes back. Torren Hart, as ever, wins it. Passes it to Dane. Dane Gilson Clark has got the ball. He's flattened. And the referee gives a free kick for that foul on Dane Gilson Clark. And it's identical to where the kick was taken a few minutes ago when it went too far through. So let's hope this time Andreas can just float it a little bit better than he did the last one because it's almost an identical position just inside the centre circle four or five yards inside the all and half of the field right here it comes here it comes what will it be Andreas Balladeros three at the backs just in case it's a long high ball coming in Gilson Clark nearly got on to it Dane uh, that was Ethan oh my goodness me he just nearly got on the end of that and it was Sean Easton, Torren Hart. Torren came forward all the way and now he's got to run all the way back yet again. Another 60 yards back to his position at the right back. <laughs> he's putting in a shift today. All right, well, they, they, all the boys are playing well. They're all doing their very, very best here in this playoff game for 13th and 14th place at the Island Games. There's games going on everywhere for places. The semi-finals will be a bit later. And that's it. The referee blows the rock. The final, not perhaps quite the final whistle, for a 1-1. And what will happen now with the 1-1? I really don't know what will happen. So it looks like they're shaking hands up. It could be penalties. And so with a full-time score being one we'll, all, all right. we'll be moving forwards onto penalties at the yep. end of this game. Okay. So it's all down so to the dreaded penalties. For Falkland Islands was number seven, Declan Bonner. Declan Bonner was just announced as being the goal scorer for the Falklands. There'll be no extra time. It's all going to be down to penalties. Which is the worst or better, Chris? I think extra time would have been a struggle for us, if I'm honest, Patrick. Um, we've, we've, we've got no real substitutes left. Um, there's a few out there, I think, are probably playing about 50% fit at this point in time. Um, they've put in an absolute great shift today again, as they did in all the other three matches that we've played in this tournament so far. It's a bit of a lottery as we know at penalties, but um, I think um, the Oldham team, they, they just look slightly fitter than us, slightly, slightly uh, like they'd be able to cope with, cope with a, an extra 30 minutes a bit better than us possibly. So, so we'll take the penalties, I think, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed if it goes our way. Right, now, Chris, you know more about this archery than I do, so can you just explain to the listeners back home uh, what exactly uh, our team did today? Remarkable result, but a gold is gold, you know, whatever the sport is. But tell us about it. What was it? So, obviously, uh, yesterday morning they, they, all, they all shot um, for, for, a, for a seeding, as you like, in, in the knockout positions. Uh, and based on based on the individual guys' seedings, they would have got they would have got they would have come up against um, a certain seed in in the knockout today. So the team this, this morning was a, as you said was a Bill Chater, Mark Lewis, and Kirsty Lewis. Uh, Bill had obviously shot extremely well yesterday, winning his silver, but also had a high seeding. So that would have that would have um, put into to put into the Falkland seeding where they would have started today. They won their first match um, by six nil. So. The point scoring system in the archery is um, obviously they'll, they all shoot two arrows each in a certain allotted time um, and whoever comes out with the highest score after those six arrows gets two points for a win or it's one point for a draw um, and obviously zero points if you defeat it. So they won, they won the first game in three ends, winning three ends in a row, getting the six points and as soon as you get to six points that is game over, you, you have one. Um, and then in the semi-final, uh, I believe they were they were at 4-4 with... Um, with Faroe Islands, I think they defeated Faroe Islands as well in, in the semi-final. The Faroes have beaten Bill and Kirsty in the mixed team knockout the uh, two days previous, so, so they'll be they'll be happy with the win over the Faroes then. And then in the final, they were up against the host nation um, Guernsey, I believe. And um, so again, it would have been all down to, to to the scoring system, and, and I believe they were four two up. Um, at one point, uh, and they'd obviously gone on to get the six points to, to get the win. So, a fantastic effort from the team. Bill's obviously played with a silver medal yesterday to add to his bronze from Britain. Mark Lewis had previously won a silver in, in Jersey. Um, and so now, now we've got a gold, so we've got a full, a full house of medals in through the archery team. So, with penalties being needed to decide yep, this um, game, it's just reminded me that Mark Lewis did win a goal for the Falcons at archery in 2.13. 
So my apologies for that. So that's probably three goals we've won. No. It wasn't that, it wasn't, that wasn't an official oh. game oh. shoot. No, no, it was an unofficial shoot. So, so maybe, maybe it, was, it is only our ever second gold medal in Ireland games. I believe so. Yeah. I know Graham Didlick won it for sure in Gotland because I was there when he won it. Uh, and the black powder. Now, unfortunately for us, the penalties are going to be taken uh, on the far side of the field from us. So the first penalty taker will be from Orland. And it's um, number t number ten, who I think is the goal scorer. Peterson, Carlson, isn't it? It's 20, is it isn't it? Peterson. It's twenty, isn't it? Oh, it's twenty. It's yeah. Peterson. Okay, we're going to have to keep record of this. So I'll just write his name down here. Peterson uh, against Ross Peters, and he oh. scores down the centre. So first, the first um, goal yeah. in the penalty shootout goes to Orland to lead. 1-0 after a 1-1 draw. If you're just joining us, Orland took the lead from a penalty from Bloomquist early in the first half and Deck Bonner on as a sub in the second, equalised uh, and made it 1-1. The, the game has ended 1-1 at 90 minutes, no extra time. And now Deck Bonner is entrusted with taking the first Falklands penalty uh, here. And my goodness, when you take the penalty, it looks a long, long way away. And this is the opportunity to equalise. Deck Bonner runs up, Deck Bonner shoots, and he puts it away nicely to the uh, right of the keeper. No hesitation from, from Deck. So Deck, in effect, scores two goals today. So he's fine, he's great. He just gives that familiar wave of his arm as if he was riding King Kenny. But um, that's the way it is. The Bonners, it's the Bonners trend. That left arm goes up in the air when they have a winner. And... Uh, He's getting congratulated from Reyes, from Baladeros, from Josh Peck, from everybody. Well done, Deck. Right now, the next penalty taker will be from Orland. And uh, we cannot see at the moment who it is. It's 22. 22 is Emerson. Emerson will take this kick. And Ross <laughs> Peters saves! He threw himself to his left. And Ross Peters saves the penalty. And it was a good penalty. It was directed well, and Ross Peters threw himself to his left, low to his left, and he saved it one-handed. You could hear the boys cheer. You could hear the boys cheer. And it's so oh, It's a miss by Orland. Now, Andreas Baladeros has a responsibility for the Falcons with his penalty shoot out. It's 1-1. And Emerson has missed. Now, Andres Baladeros. And he scores down the middle for the Falcons. Baladeros scores. So the Falcons go 2 1 up in penalties. 2 1 for the Falcons. Yep, uh, we've got a TV microphone that we have to talk into here as well. And uh, I'm trying to keep track of it by writing down the goal scorers. Number nine is coming forward now from. Uh, Apple, A-P-P-E-L, Apple, is coming forward to take the next kick for, he's a substitute for Orland. Apple with his left foot. Ross is dancing, dancing around. Apple comes up. Oh, oh bad luck. Ross threw himself to his right. He got his hand to it, and it bounced off the inside of the post into the net. Extremely bad luck for Ross Peters, but the ball is counts. It's a goal for Orland, so they they uh, close the gap to 2-2, but they have had one more penalty than, than we've had. Next responsibility will fall to Ethan Gilson Clark. Scored a lovely goal against Shetlands. Had a great second half today. And can he put this one away? Can he retain the Falklands lead? We're not hardly looking. He runs up. Oh, and he puts it over the bar. He puts it over the bar. Oh, no, no, no. So it's all equal again. It's all equal again. He puts that shot over the bar. Does Ethan Gilson Clark. Bad luck for the lad. But it's difficult out there in a game like this. You... Now, what's, um, what's going on with the referee and the, la the referee's assistant? Hmm. I was just hoping that something, something might have been an infringement by the keeper. But anyway, it's all square now. It's two penalties scored, one missed each. And here comes the penalty taker from Orland, and he puts it away. And it might have been number 
19, I think it was, Gostas, the captain. It was Gostas, yeah, the captain who scores uh, with that goal. So they all in take the lead again, and this time it's Matt Francis who has the responsibility of trying to keep the Falklands in the penalty shootout. Um, you ever had to take penalties in a shootout? I have a couple of times, Patrick, many, many years ago, yeah. I think remember one, remember one in a in a cup match for Red Sox, I think. I've got to know how many years ago that was, but uh, yeah, just a couple of times. Nerve-wracking experience, certainly. Yeah. OK, Matt Francis with his left foot comes up. And he puts it over the bar as well. And that is looking a bit worrying for the Falklands. Oh, I feel so sorry for the lad. He's had such a good tournament, Matt Francis, as well. He's looking pretty disconsolate now, walking back. And he's got his head down. Oh, it's a nice gesture from the um, Orland player who's going up to take the next penalty, that, which is uh, Karlstrom. And he actually gives him a little pat and says, look, sorry. And the boys are pulling Matt back and saying, come on, don't worry about it. it uh, you can't... Um, to win. Think about it too much. You, penalties are there to be scored or missed. It's difficult. Right. So this will be Bloomquist. He scored the penalty early on and he runs up and he kicks it. Oh. And it just rolls under Matt Francis. And is that it? That's it. 4-2. Four two. Four two. Yep. They win 4-2. All in win 4-2 in the penalty shootout. And they're embracing the goalkeeper uh, there. I feel sorry for our lads. I mean, we, we were there. We were winning this penalty shootout, and then sadly it just all went a bit wrong. And the lads now, well, what can they say? They're a little bit, understandably, they're a, they'll, be feeling it, they'll be feeling it. And what can you go and say to a player who's just missed a penalty shootout? Um, well, commiserations, of course. I feel sorry for... Ethan and Matt Francis missed the two for us and, and sadly that means that the Falklands, they lose a place. It's not the gold medal they've lost or a silver or a bronze, but they just the lose a place Scorsese overall Island, uh, and they will the finish 14th, 14th instead of 13th in this tournament. But, uh, so that's a good position to finish in anyway. It's a nice high position to finish in. Um, and they uh, can be quite proud of their the performance. So um, we're up on the scaffolding and um, the it's going to be very difficult for us to go anywhere to, to get down to talk to anybody at this moment in time. So I think we'll just have to leave it at that for now and, uh, and wish you uh, a very good morning in the Falklands. And um, well, I hope you have an enjoyable breakfast. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it would have been nice if we could have said well, we've won this game, but uh, we, we took it to, to penalties and we went out fighting, but it wasn't to be in the penalty shootout. So after a 1-1 draw, after 90 minutes, Orland win the penalty shootout by four goals to two, and they will take the higher position here. But it was a good second half for the Falklands. They played well, they really put in the shift, uh, and I'll get Chris Arnon to sum up what he thought overall, if, please. As you say, Patrick, yeah, I think first half, Orland certainly were, were on top uh, and probably deserved their 1-0 lead at the Blake break, even though it came from their penalty. Um, but second half, Falkland performance was, was excellent. Um, they obviously had the breeze behind them, but from an attacking point of view, we made several chances. We had an early shape for a penalty, which probably could have gone our way, if I'm, if I'm honest. We've had some good chances where we could have finished it off. Um, but uh, cruel, way to go, cruel way to lose the game, obviously, in the penalties. Um, but, you know... Uh, the guys have been brave enough to step up and, and offer to, to get, take the penalty as well. So, you know, but I think generally in the Ireland games, the football team has probably overachieved compared to what a lot of people thought was maybe going to happen here. They had three terrific results, really, against very, very strong sides in their, in their group. Um, an excellent game today against an Ireland side who, who have, as you say, have got a history of, of being strong in the Ireland games. Uh, it certainly bodes well and something, something, something to build on massively for, for Orkney 2025. Yeah, yes, Chris, you've hit on something there. I mean, here we are saying how disappointed we are. I mean, we lose a penalty shootout. We all feel it. But at the end of the day, to get a draw against a team, an, an island with 30,000 population compared to our four, 20 football teams with, a t with the team in the Finnish 
Premier League. Now, I'm not saying any of their players were on the field today, but nevertheless, the fact 20 football teams indicates 20 by 20 is 400. There's probably 1,000 or more playing football. So, really, we, we've done well to, to come out of, with a draw in this match, haven't we? Absolutely, Patrick. And I would imagine um, most of the Ireland players have been together for some time and trained together, the whole squad, I would imagine. Uh, and, you know, whereas we, we've got maybe 60% of our squad living in the Falklands, training together when, when Troy can get, to get them. And, and obviously, another, you know, the rest of the guys are either over at college or, or live in the UK and, and only come together a week before the tournament. So the way they've come together, you know, those two sets of players, um, they've moulded together, they've, they've, you know, they've really worked out. The, the, the camaraderie around the hotel, I've been around them a fair bit. The hotel as well has been fantastic. Um, and as I say, you know, it's, it's generally a very, very young squad. So, you know, there's a lot to look forward to, I think, in Orkney. Yeah, and of course the distance, we forget about that. I mean, all are saying, oh, we've had a long way to come. But they did, they're in Europe, you know, they're up in the Baltic there, and they, they didn't have too far to come. Uh, a long way to come is when you've got to come 8,000 miles uh, and then find your way from mainland UK over here to get, that's a long way, isn't it? Absolutely. The, you know, the travel travels def, def, definitely has an impact. Uh, but I think, you know, the main, the main thing is probably the lack of... Lack of um, of games the guys the guys get certainly the lack of competitive games the guys get um, compared to all these other nations these other nations will be playing competitive games week on week we were mm. talking about this last night with, yeah. with Wayne and with Wayne and Troy it's you know it, it's it really puts us at a disadvantage when we come to a tournament like this unfortunately we managed to get that friendly against Chagos yeah. which would have which would have tuned them up a little bit but obviously you know throughout throughout the two years or however you know the periods between Ireland games it's, it is a bit of a struggle to get those competitive games which would really sharpen you up now, looking ahead two years to Orkney, uh, it was six years from the last football tournament. Gibraltar couldn't host football. We had COVID, knocked out of games. 2.17 was the last time. Here we are now, six years later. Uh, and two years' time, we're looking forward to, to Orkney. Um, I guess Andreas Balladeros won't be there. Uh, he said to me it was his last games. But you know, looking forward to that, who, who, who can you see sort of being our main stays in, in the Orkneys? Well, I'd like to think, Patrick, most of this squad will be, will be available for, 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 for Orkney. Um, you know, I think Troyden and Wayne certainly have built up a, a fair bit of momentum with this squad now they've got them together. Um, obviously, you could call out some, some picks in, 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 in this tournament that have really, really shone. I mean, but I think in general, the whole squad has been... It's been great. Um, they've, they've, they've worked hard together. They've, they've done the jobs they've been asked of. Um, you know, we'd hope, we'd like to think that we'll, we'll be able to get Ethan up, Ethan Gilson Clark, you know, back in the squad next time. And and Jordan, a fit Jordan Betts, I think, would make a big difference. Um, you know, we've got young Sean and, and people like that. Jake Matt Francis, Corksworth. Jay Corksworth, unfortunately, didn't kick a ball. So you know, that's there's other people, there's other people to come in. I understand there's probably one or two more at home, possibly. You know, are, are coming through as well. So there's. There's a lot to look forward to, I think, you know, and, and, and I think, you know, the F really, they probably want to tr start the planning for Orkney sooner rather than later. Um, two years' time, get the plans in place, try and get the squad organised, hopefully everybody, you know, everybody works hard. Those ones that are obviously in the UK, not in the Falklands, keeping in touch with them, looking at what they're doing, hopefully try, you know, try and keep them as integrated as possible. Um, and, you know, I think, I really think with this squad that, you know, they've, they've, they've got a lot more to give yet. Um, and, and... Hopefully, in Orkney, with a, a bit more of a favourable jaw, favourable jaw than we've had here, we might we might do better. Thank you very much, Chris Ireland, for your summaries throughout the uh, tournament. Well, that's it from the football coverage. The competition carries on, of course, with uh, two semi-finals uh, later today, and then on tomorrow there's a bronze medal playoff uh, for the ladies as well as the men's. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of football still to be played here. But for the Falklands, that's it from this Island Games anyway. But they can go back home with heads held high. They've uh, c acquitted themselves well. Never, never looked like conceding masses of goals like they have in previous tournaments against Isle of Man, Yinus Mon and Shetlands and so on when they've been hammered eight and nine. They, a great performance, seriously hampered by injuries. But nevertheless, it's been great to see them here. And, uh, well, finally, just hope you've enjoyed our commentaries. I mean, there's going to be a killer. If there'd been a, a, um, a goal at any time, you felt that that was going to be the winner, wasn't it? So the pressure must have been intense on the lads. Yeah, no, certainly once it got to one all. You could sort of see it in both teams. We both knew that no-one wanted to make a mistake. Um, 
and they got in a couple of times and we were like sweating on the bench. Then we got in a couple of times. I mean, Dane had a great opportunity, but given that he's pretty much playing on one leg, he did very, very well to, to square it in the end. Um, if he was fit, I think he just would have kept on going straight at the goal. But um, yeah, it was, it was tense, all right. The second half, you changed things at half time. Yeah. And it just made such a difference, didn't it? Ethan hardly had a kick in the first half, Gilson Clark. Second half, he was just a totally different player. Yeah, we had to get close to him. We had to get somewhere up there with him. Um, and Toby was shot. Toby did very well to play those 30, first 45 minutes. Um, then Andres came in. We, we just went, we went old school. We went 4-4-2. Um, asked a lot of Sean and Ethan to help out attacking and defence, and they did. Yeah. But the slight disappointment of the whole tournament has been the injuries have meant we couldn't release Matt Francis where we wanted him. We just had to ask him to do a job, which he did brilliantly again. Um, I mean, here but, we are. You know, Andres Balladero, should he be in the squad? You know, whatever, whatever. He's, he's getting a, a little bit on in years. And my goodness me, he was as met, majestic as ever, wasn't he? That left foot of his. He was getting boys away, everything was that he did. And he was all over the place. Yeah, and just so clever. It, when, when we were under pressure, he was winning free kicks at the right areas, slowing it down. Um, just looking after the boys, really. It is, well, we all know it's a very, very inexperienced squad that can only get better. Um, and the likes of him and, and Dan yesterday and the day before. I mean, Dan's three years older than Andres, and he, he played a 290 minutes tremendously. So, yeah, no, both of them. Re, re, I mean, that's what we brought them for. We needed experience. We knew that. Um, yeah, one of the most unexpected things, I, so, I suppose, really, was penalty shootout. We didn't even know what was going to happen. Would it be decided by extra time? Would it be penalty? We didn't know. Now, how well prepared were you for penalties? Or had you not even thought about it? No, we, we'd thought about it. We knew, but we didn't practice them. Um, we, we just picked the boys who have got the technique to hit a ball 12 yards pretty well. Um, and unfortunately, the two best players of the tournament for us, probably, um, were the two boys that missed. But that can happen to anyone. We see it in professional football. There was no pressure on them. Um, it was just go out and embrace it, enjoy it. If it goes the other way, we'll be happy. We're still quite happy with the effort, but... Yeah. Are, are, they, are they a bit upset there in the dressing room at the moment, uh, Troy? Do, do they feel they've really lost the game instead of fact they've drawn a the game, really? Yeah, no, no, there's none of that. The, the only... Ethan's obviously disappointed that he missed his penalty, um, and Matt as well. Um, but overall, no, there's, there's a lot of pride. They, as I said before, there's nobody in there with any energy left, so they know that they've given everything, and, and that's all they ask of each other and all we ask of them. Four games in five days. It's a tremendous challenge, isn't it, for, for anyone of any age? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if well, we say it quite often, but if you asked Man City or Man United or someone to do it, they'd laugh at you and walk away. There's, there's no way they would. £50,000 yeah. a week. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I was just talking to Mr Letizier there about it, and he just saying that it's just a, it's such a hard, hard tournament, and it, it is a bit mad, but, but it is what it is, and we know that. Um, of course, we've been pretty unlucky to lose two lads before we started, so that put us on the back foot a little bit. And poor old Jordan, he, we, we gave him some minutes today, but... He was, he was, you could just see, he was really, really struggling with that knee. That's such a shame because the quality he brings, um, and young Jake as well, of course. Jake's been brilliant. Um, he's just been there supporting the guys every day, but not got a minute of it um, after all the build-up. I mean, he's been at every training session for three years, I think, putting everything into it and then to not play. So, so wow. yeah. Now, here is the million-dollar question. Will Troy Bowles still be taking a team to Orkneys or not? I've heard rumours about golf, but tell me the truth. No, I don't know, Patrick. The, the rumours actually come, I think, from a, a chap who interviewed me and then put a thing on Twitter um, where I'd actually, we were talking about Orkney and I said that I thought the course would match our golf as well. And he already knew that I'd been to a few on golf. And next thing he put a tweet up saying that um, I said I'd be going for the golf. Um, I don't know. We'll have a little time to think about it. I've really struggled the last two years for the time commitment to do what I want to do with the team, um, with work as well. And that's going to be the, the big decision, really, just to see. Um, yeah, but we'll I mean, see. No, you, you, I'm not you, saying no, I'm not saying yes, basically. Yeah. I mean, people forget you are, they don't forget in the Falklands, you are our chief pilot with the Falkland Island Government Air Service, Troy. Yeah. I mean, you, don't, you have the responsibility for all the other pilots, training, everything else. I mean, that's a okay, guys, dreadful, com, a tremendous equipment. You know, you have family, you have a wife, you, you know, you have, you have a lot of things in, in, in your life as well. And this does occupy a lot of your time, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned golf, I've hardly played golf this year I think I've probably played two tournaments maybe and, yeah. and I, like I was doing the course head at Johnson's and things which was a bit of a, a respite and get away from everything um, and it's only really thanks to the colleagues at Firegas who sort of pick up the slack and and keep things going when I'm not there that this is even possible so big thanks to them as well um, but yeah you're absolutely right and it's not just me it's all the other guys as well that 
you mentioned before, but we're, they're not paid to do this. Um, they're putting all those hours and hours and hours of training and commitment in, away from family, away, missing missing events and things yeah. to, to get ready for it. Um, so, yeah, it's a big one for everyone. But uh, whoever, if it's me or not me, it doesn't matter. These boys, are the average age is 23. Um, they're only going to get better and better and better. So I've got the likes of young Jake coming in. We've got Andrew at home who come to all their training sessions who's a tremendous player. Um, the future's bright. We just need to make sure we keep it going, keep it ticking over. And that's it. You can have the best players in the world, Troy, but unless you've got someone to motivate them, someone who shows interest, gives it, get, tells them how good they are, even if the play's not so good, unless you have someone to do that, and you've done that now for how many years for the Falklands? Uh, 2017 I started doing this, but, but there's lads playing there today who have been coming to football with me since they were 10, so yeah. 15 years have been listening to my voice, which is probably a bit long for anyone. Um, but, yeah, no, we'll see. Um, whilst I think about it, though, I've got to put a big thank you to Wayne for all the effort all the way through, um, and the FIDF at home, actually, for letting us train in the, in the hall, because that, that made a big difference. Our, our fitness levels were probably the best in every game, I think, mm -hmm. but, um, against the teams we were playing, which is tremendous. Um, and then Jimmy, who's come from the Chagos, the Chagos manager, who's really helped us with the shape. I mean, a lot of what we did in that game against Isle of Man was thanks to him. Yeah. Just how he, again, just that different voice, just explaining to the boys yeah. how to move in the shape. And then the star, probably, if the whole week has been Dana for patching the boys up because she's been a busy girl. She probably never anticipated quite how much work she'd be doing in a week. But, yeah. but just, to, just to keep them going has been awesome. Now, you've had loads and loads of stars in yeah. this team. Now, I'm giving a trophy for the best player of the tournament. Now, it's going to be decided by the players themselves. I don't make that decision, and there's a nice trophy there waiting to be presented later today, and I'm, I've got papers ready to, for everybody to write their, their names down on it. And I can think of four, five, or six players right now. Where do you start? Ross Peters today, brilliant game again. Superb today. Superb today. Uh, so many players, brilliant performances, Troy. It's going to be very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Would you like to name your man of the tournament? It's tricky, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Ethan, Ethan gilson clark has been different class. He's arguably been the best player on the pitch in a lot of our games, including the full opposition team. Mm -hmm. And Matt Francis, I mean, Matt's just done an incredible job for his not really playing in his favoured position, but just doing it so well. Um, as you mentioned, Ross, Josh has been leading us from the back. Um, the boys in the midfield. I thought Matthias had a really good game today, actually. When things weren't working in the first half, he was still getting yeah. in the right places. Yeah. Um, Toby Sean was good in two of those yeah. games, really good today. He wasn't quite as good as the other day, but again, he's carrying knocks. Um, and the one we quite often forget is Deck, because he just does everything and makes and good he scored. decisions. He yeah, scored. Came on yeah. And scored. He, he does that. He makes the right decision nearly every time in, yeah. the, in the play he does. I mean, that was the right thing to do at that time yeah. um, and tucked his penalty away. Um, so. Yeah. No, uh, I, no is the short yeah, answer. Okay, I'm not going to name yeah, anyone. I won't put you on the spot. We'll, we, it'll be interesting. We'll see who the boys themselves think later on today. Yeah, sure, uh, Troy, you've done a great job for, for the Falklands and getting the boys here. I'm sure they appreciate it as we do. Thank you very much. Thank and you. we hope to see you in two years' time. Yeah, we, we'll see on that one. But thank you. Thanks to all the media guys, the NSC, everybody who's put all the work into getting us here. Massive thank you to our sponsors. Stanley Services, our main ones, of course, but all the others. Um, the, the people who sponsor their training camp. The, I've, I mean, I'm not going to start naming people. They know who they are. We'll, we'll make sure they, they get a thank you. But if I name someone, I'll start missing people out. So, But, yeah, thank you all. And thank you for the support at home. Really good. Troy Bowles, safe flying. Thanks, Patrick.